All right. Good afternoon, evening, or wherever you may be. It is uh, about 3.40 in the afternoon in Japan right now for me. Uh, so usually Saturday, I don't do streams, but this came up in my feed, and uh, it's a topic that I'm quite passionate about, which is YouTube analysis and review of what people say about the platform and the various things that uh, will kind of are very frustrating for creators. So Shadowversity is, uh, I like Shadowversity, I'll be honest. Um, he is a sword YouTuber. He does a lot of um, content reviewing like katanas, claymores, things like that. And then sometimes he does like the odd like anime sword, like would it work sort of thing. So if you've ever seen like uh, Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, he'll do like a thing like he'll do like, uh, you know, could this whip sword really work sort of thing. It's quite interesting stuff. Uh, but it's not typically my like daily viewing content. Like um, when I watch a Shadowversity video, it's usually for something very specific. Like maybe I want to see, could a katana really beat a claymore sort of thing? I think he's got a lot of content on that. Yeah, he's got like uh, Odachi, which is like a big katana basically versus claymore who would win sort of stuff. And it's pretty like high effort content. Uh, there's a lot of production goes into it. There's usually three hosts. And I don't know how many people behind the scenes, but I would assume there's a couple. Now, Shediversity is claiming in this video, and I did watch a little bit of this previously because it was like I was having my breakfast, and I thought this might be interesting. It's about 40 minutes long. I'm going to go through it. We might go through in 1.25 speed. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So I guess we'll just get right into it. And hello there, Max, and everybody else in chat. Remember to like the video. And let me have the audio. Oh, wait. I need to... Let me restart that because I was muted myself. Very prof very professional live stream. All right, let's start. You might have heard that YouTube channels have a life cycle. And although that's not applicable to every content make creator, this a bit... it is to yeah. some. And it seems like Shadowversity might be reaching its end. Okay, so this is a pretty pretty heavy intro to the topic. Um, when he says that a lot of YouTubers, uh, YouTube channels have a live stream, uh, not live stream, sorry, a lifespan, uh, it's it's usually around three to five years, and that's typically when the both the audience gets tired of the content and also the creator themselves kind of wants to move on to new things. It's very difficult to actually get into something if it's just a hobby and keep it going for multiple, multiple years when you've got so much other things to do, and especially for creators as well, when they make it their career. Um, it can be very... It's when you turn your hobby into a job that it starts, all the passion kind of goes out of it and it becomes this very robotic and very repetitive life cycle of just like repeating these sort of content that you think the algorithm will enjoy. But when I say algorithm, uh, because we're going to be going into a little bit of the details about how YouTube actually works, um, the algorithm is kind of a misnomer uh, for a lot of YouTube. It's not really about what the algorithm likes, it's about what the audience likes. And one of the things that a lot of YouTubers make a mistake on is that the YouTube platform is not to serve the creator. YouTube is not trying to make sure that you do good as a creator. YouTube's number one goal is for the audience to reach maximum satisfaction. And that can be achieved through multiple ways and through different types of content. Unfortunately, what this sometimes means is that content that you might consider quality or good content, and that's a very subjective thing. But sometimes YouTube will serve you content that was not necessarily what you want, like, I might, I might think, like, okay, I want to listen to a podcast that increases the way I think about something, right? Like, I want to get a bit of a brain boost because I'm a bit of a dumb boy or something. That's what I kind of want. But it's not exactly what I might consume. So what I might consume is some drama video or something about some celebrity gossip or something. Not really because I don't really listen to celebrity gossip, but just for example. So YouTube is very good at finding you content that you will consume, but not necessarily what you want to consume. And sometimes what you get is that the lowest effort content like reaction videos, uh, gaming. And like, when I say low effort, I don't mean that it's like actually like a piece of shit, okay? I don't mean it's like trash. What I mean is it's just easier or has takes less effort than say getting up into like, like look at this cost, look at this video. They've got um, historical costumes, they've got armor, they've got swords. This is high effort content that can't be produced every day because it's got so much effort goes into it. If you sit down and watch like a, a reaction to video like I'm doing now, it's very easy. It's considered low effort content. The problem is that low effort content is very easy to consume. It's kind of like the McDonald's of YouTube content. And uh, there, you know, there are some times where you just want to sit down and eat some McDonald's rather than having a proper good steak meal with some like tasty vegetables and things like that. And also Nick, thank you for being a member for 90 months. That's fantastic. Let's continue. Shadowversity, the channel, is dying, and it's not for the quality of content. I genuinely believe, and the feedback certainly is to this effect, that we've been making some of the best content we ever have. And uh, hundreds of thousands of people 
um, have been interested and are still in or would be and want to watch if they had actually been getting recommended uh, the content. There's been people reaching out to me saying that they thought I had stopped uploading um, but no, we've been releasing content as normal. They just... A little bit quiet. I'll try and turn it up. Uh, actually, that's about as, as loud as I can make it, unfortunately. Uh, but this is a good place to pause and have a little bit of a chat about what has happened. So there's a couple things here. Um, Shad has said that his content is the highest production quality it's been in, a, in I guess, since the inception of the channel. And uh, it is also content that people want to watch. I think that's true on both parts. When I look at a Shadowversity video, I do think this is high production. The camera work is good. The editing is good. The information is actually phenomenal. Uh, he did a video recently I watched, which was like um, how uh, Veritarism uh, got so much wrong about the Katana, where they go in, he goes in like an in-depth review of this how to make Katana video by, uh, is it Veritism or Veracitarum? I don't know. Uh, but he goes in and talks about what they got wrong in the video. It's a fantastic video if you're interested in sword making. Um, now, where was I going to go with that? Right. But then he says that, so, well, sorry, first point. First point, I agree with him. I think his content is high production and that people do want to see it. Um, again, this goes into the point that sometimes there is content we want to see, but not necessarily we will see it. Like sometimes I will see a video like, um, for example, this Katana useless versus medieval armor. That sounds very interesting. Do I have 20 minutes to put towards this right now? Maybe not. If it's 20 minutes, if it's 12 minutes that a lot of people um, can probably get through it pretty quickly. But if you see a longer video, like this is a one hour video, I'll usually save one hour videos until I'm like sitting down eating dinner or I'm working on something where I don't have to be looking at the screen. Like, you know, second monitor content, which isn't necessarily a dig. Some people use that as like a bad thing. Like, like this is content I would only watch on my second monitor sort of thing. I don't think that's a bad thing because I enjoy my second monitor content. It keeps me interested and proactive when I'm doing work on my other monitor, right? But that's kind of a bit of a problem is sometimes people see these sort of videos and it's like, it's a video they would like to watch, but they're not in the mood to watch it right now. And if you don't watch it right now, you might just never come back to it. Now, the second point he makes there is that he's not having his videos served into the subscription feed or notification feed of his audience. And that is a big concern for a lot of YouTube creators. Um, it, it sounds like ridiculous, but if you subscribe to someone, um, you're not actually going to get their stuff on your feed. It's only if you watch the content. I'm actually not subscribed to uh, Shed on this channel. But that's because I just go to his channel when I want to watch it. Uh, and that's kind of what YouTube is moving towards. They don't necessarily want you, they don't want you to just subscribe to the, um, the subscription's almost useless, honestly, of YouTube. We're being honest. Subscription is a vanity metric at the point. Like after you get like 1,000, it doesn't really matter. The only really good thing that subscribers that like on a channel are for is for increasing your clout on the YouTube platform. But that's also very useful for getting like, say, uh, sponsorships and uh you know collaborations with other people what only thing that really matters is the amount of views that you're getting and youtube is moving towards this view model and the reason they're doing this is because they want you to not be like loyal to one individual creator because that creator could leave any time or they could stop making content and then you stop coming to the platform they want you to come to the platform and then consume the content that they're pushing which has their analytics behind it that shows that you're going to keep watching <laughs> and shows that you're, um, you know, you're going to stay on the platform longer. It's called uh, session view time. They're def definitely moving towards that. And YouTube themselves have been saying this, and they've also been saying that they're moving towards viewer satisfaction. Uh, that can be achieved through a lot of ways. I'm not exactly sure how they would net they would measure if you're satisfied. Probably if you just stay on the platform for a long time and like the video and leave comments and things. Now, even though I'm saying that these things don't really matter, they do matter to the creator, but they don't matter for the viewer. And again, we're kind of looking at this balancing act between what is YouTube serving? And they definitely serve the user. So I want people to subscribe to me. Like, if you're on a channel, I'd love if you like the video. That helps me, but it doesn't necessarily help you. Uh, so that is one thing. But again, if you're a new YouTuber, this is incredibly frustrating because you're like saying, well, I have a thousand people subscribe to me. That means when I put out a video, I'm going to get a thousand views minimum. No. Um, there are many, many instances of channels with big amounts of uh, subscriber counts, like Shed's channel himself is a uh, 1.69, uh, nice, million subscribers. That's a lot of people. But on the average video views is, uh, I think, let's see, he's got 200,000 of the video watching now, uh, 29,000 on the last one, uh, 20, 30, 50. So like averaging between like, we'll say 40 to 100,000 views per video, which is actually a pretty good amount of videos, uh, views, which kind of makes me surprised why he's saying his channel is dying. 
Uh, but I have definitely seen a lot of channels that have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and they can't even get over a few thousand views, which is very frustrating. Um, and it's actually happened to me as well. So I'm not immune from this either. And we'll talk about it a bit later, but uh, we'll continue going now. But that is very frustrating. What um, If you want to actually see someone's content, like in your subscription box, what you have to do is subscribe, hit the notification alarm, subscribe right now, right? So you can see there. And then you want to go down and then sit all on the bell. Like I know this is like, you probably have heard this before, but you have to have this. But in addition to this, you also have to watch their content religiously. If you do this to my channel, you subscribe, sit, hit all on the bell, but then you skip five of my videos, YouTube is not going to recommend you my next uh, few videos because they've decided that if I you are served my video, then you will not stay on the platform longer. So they will definitely go to a different, they'll, they'll serve you content from like Mr. Beast or someone that has like these high engagement rates and these high um, satisfaction rates from YouTube. And speaking about satisf satisfaction, I'm very satisfied with this $20 super chat from Sir Mahos who says, Shad has his third channel, The Shadlands, where he is working on his land, where he wanted to build a living museum for castles. And apparently his channel is getting boned so hard he may have to sell his place now, which blows. Yes, thank you very much for that super chat. And we'll also be looking at that in a uh, moment. I think at the end of the video, actually, he talks about The Shadlands as well. I would actually know about that as well because like... Um, I mostly learn from Shadowversity from watching a few episodes of EFAP. I mean, EFAP is one of those things I do watch religiously, but it's like once it's like a once a week thing. Uh, he was on a few episodes where they were talking about uh, some medieval stuff. So let's continue now. We're only 12 minutes into the stream and 49 seconds into this video. Stop getting recommended it, and I'll show you the evidence of what's going on. There's been a change uh, in the last few months that has caused a stark and genuinely devastating suppression of our content's reach to both new viewers and current subscribers. As a result, views are down and revenue is the worst that it I love when YouTubers share their analytics. This is like candy to me. I'm like a I'm like a, a YouTube analytics pervert. When I see this, it's like yes, yes. This is actually incredible to see like because YouTube's YouTubers are very resident to share any information they have about their channel. But Shad actually goes into some details. So this made me very, very aroused when I saw this data. Has ever been in the last five years. I'm not kidding. Like when you look at the revenue where it's currently at now. Unfortunately, there's one key thing of like, even though I said that he's sharing this data, he has omitted the side data, which actually shows us how much money he's making. Now I can kind of estimate how much he is making, but we're going to go and talk about that a bit later when it brings up the actual data. Um, it's kind of frustrating because I can see the one, like, I'm going to go back, like, maybe 10 seconds. So he's actually, he has actually gone in here where it says, what well, you can see the zero cents, and he's edited out in white all the money that he's making. So we can't actually see. Now, that's probably good. Like, I'm not entitled to this information, but I wish I could see it. That's the thing. It's it's like, it's information that I want. Uh, but he does reveal a few pieces of key information on his earnings later, which can kind of give us a rough estimate of where he is. Years. I'm not kidding. Like when you look at the revenue where it's currently at now, the only time it's been so low, five years ago. And so it is quite literally only thanks to our supporters that we've been able to keep things going. And when I say keep things going, uh, we're still in the red every single month where I'm actually losing money each month and where we are not sustainable at the moment and with the projection of how now that is a terrifying situation to be into when you're in any business but for youtubers in particular it is such a volatile and you never you never know what's going to happen with youtube there might be another apocalypse you might get demonetized you might get yellow text on your videos which means that you're going to get limited ads which basically means you get no money from your videos and that happens quite frequently on my channel i know what that's like that's why i've got my channel for I'm a good boy and I've got this channel where I get to do and say things that I actually want to say but that's just how it is but when you move from like a mid like it's kind of tricky to talk about large medium and small youtubers but um there's kind of like the the one man business youtuber who can be very successful they could have hundreds of subscribers oh, sorry hundreds of thousands of subscribers and they can still do everything themselves at a certain point of scalability though is you want to hire like editors you want to hire a team maybe to really go above and beyond to get to that next strata of youtube creation and that's what shad has done he has hired i, I assume he's hired a cameraman it could be the third guy i don't i, I thought the i thought the other guy's his son or something i'm not sure about that i don't know too much about him 
Uh, but he's got like at least three people on staff. So that's three salaries to serve. And, uh, you know, if YouTube ad revenue goes down and you're a single YouTuber, maybe you've got like some, you've got some backup, you've got your emergency fund. It's fine. You know, you can weather the, the storm because this is a bad time at the moment because it's the beginning of the year. Well, it's actually kind of going into the first, I guess, the second quarter, right? But the first th three, four months of the year uh, typically pay pretty low on YouTube. The best month is obviously in December because people are waiting for Christmas, um, for the Christmas advertisement bonuses and everything. But yeah, it's it's very low in like January, February, and the beginning part of March. And it kind of recovers after that. But yeah, when you've got three people, at least, to feed, and not to mention his own like family, wife, uh, I don't know if he's got any kids, actually. Uh, but like you've got people, you've got responsibility. So when you are dependent on a channel, on, an, on a company like YouTube, uh, that can be very scary, very scary, because if you're the boss, you get all the risk, but you get you get all the reward, but you get all the risk, right? Uh, so let's continue. How things are going in terms of views and subscribers. It's uh, like I said, these are the very real signs of uh, a channel's imminent death. There's five might kids, say really? imminent, well, like what's going so it's on. Really Can't you just cut back costs and things like that? Making the content that we're making costs money. There are multiple people employed here and with where things are at and where things look to be going because it's just been getting worse, the channel in its current state will simply not be able to exist as it is. And I will talk about options about still making content and other things, but let me show you what's going on. This, right, this is the current subscriber rate on Shadowversity for the last 90 days. Now, this is something that's actually, this is actually very similar to my own subscriber chart. You, channels get into a point where they get like this negative or just moving sideways on their growth. So everything above this line is um, is plus and everything is under here is negative. So this is negative subscriber growth. Like you'd lose some subscribers, you'd gain subscribers. This happens quite a bit um, when you have like inactive accounts or like legacy accounts. Um, a lot of YouTubers have been around for a long time, like it's been like 10 years or something. You know, people will like delete their channel, their, their accounts and things, and then you'll lose subscribers. Or maybe you'll say something spicy and they'll unsubscribe, you know, things like that. Uh, and it's very frustrating to be in because you kind of just move sideways. And um, in a world where we always are thinking about expanding, like, and moving up and advancing you don't really think about the times when you're going to go down in your career so that's uh, very frustrating i can i can feel that myself and you might notice a distinct and rather abrupt drop in january where new subscriptions to the channel simply cut off and uh, we've been now this is a very strange thing to see though like what would have happened on his channel in january that could have started this sort of trend. Because it does seem pretty obvious here that he's gone from, if this is like January 2nd, so he was gaining almost, um, I'm not sure if this is daily. This is the last 90 days. So I guess this would probably be daily, right? Let's see, he was gaining almost 1,000 subscribers a day. Uh, and then he's gone down to negative or uh, sideways growth. I wonder if there's anything controversial he did. Um, I know some people are talking about his AI takes in the chat. I don't think that's it. I don't think it's that. Um, there was some controversy he was involved in with um, this other guy that makes sword content, Sell Sword Arts, I think. But I don't think that would have caused that. Like, okay, three months ago, the last 90 days, looks like he's getting... Yeah, you can see much more consistent growth here. He's getting 100k minimum, 300k. Uh, 70k, this is still in there. It doesn't seem like there's anything that would have caused this drop except for perhaps a change in viewing habits or a change in the um, YouTube audience serving algorithm. Uh, so I could not determine what it would be from looking at his channel, at least from this. Maybe some people in chat know, but um, <laughs> I don't think it's the AI stuff. I know some people are very angry about his AI takes, but I actually think he has pretty good takes on AI. Uh, so my house with an extra $2 says the real shit thing is about his employee. Is that he employs people? Yes, that's always very tricky. It's always very troublesome. Uh, he maybe he should have shut his ignorant mouth about AI. I know a lot of folks who no longer watch his content because of that. Well, maybe it is. Maybe there is something to do with the AI thing. I've seen him fighting with people on Twitter about the AI takes, but I don't think that there'd be that many people. Like the a lot of people have really bad takes on AI as it is. Um, but AI is just a tool. It's essentially like a tractor, and we move and um, it, it's a labor saving device, in my opinion. Uh, but I don't think that would be it, honestly. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, based on his performance on his other channels. But let's continue. Been dancing around the zero mark for nearly three months. Well, we're in the third month now. The recently released videos in like this time period, over this two to three month period where subscriber growth is nearly, you know, being non-existent, 
The views on the content during this time has been the worst it has been in nearly like five years. Some videos might not look like that. There's the odd one that does well, like the reply to Veritasium, but the oh, Veritasium, there we go, that answered that question. Fiber growth that we gain from those videos are not nearly what it should be. And the recommendation of these videos to new audiences barely are happening at all. And so the current content that we've been releasing through this time have been apocalyptically bad in regards to their reach to new audiences. Uh, even the ones that did surprisingly well, like the carbon fiber armor video, over 300,000 views on that video, mostly coming from our regular subscriber base. But even now, more recently, recommendations even to our subscribers, especially these last two videos, which are two of the worst performing videos I've had in over five years, right? Uh, so people, are, let's see, hold on. I've, I've thought about this a bit now. People are very butthurt about his AI takes. I don't think it's this. I don't think it's the AI thing. And there's a reason I say that. I'm um, sure there's probably like a few, maybe a few thousand people stop watching him because of that. But I believe all of his AI takes are on his Twitter account and not necessarily in his videos. I know he has talked about AI in a few of his videos, but it's not the regular content. And here's the thing. People on Twitter don't actually have as much, as much pull or as much influence as they think they do. Um, and we know this because when someone gets cancelled on Twitter, like if we think about Sunny V2 or something, when he talked about uh, that Chris in Mr. Beast is going to be the end of Mr. Beast or something, uh, a lot of people are very angry at uh, Sunny because of that. But Sunny didn't say anything. He just kept making content and content that people enjoy. And that's the reality is that most people's morals are not in line with their viewing habits. They will say in public that they hate like these bad things that various creators do but then they'll just go in and watch a video if it's enjoyable like a lot most people are like this like they'll say that they're against like cruelty and stuff but then they'll buy an iphone or whatever you know things like that people don't really care um if the content is good people will watch in my opinion so i really don't think it's about the ai uh the content seems to be the same but hold on i'm getting a bit of a brain fart there yeah i i, I really don't think it's the ai the AI thing. Now, has there been a drop in quality of his videos? I'd have to watch all his videos to decide that. I don't think that's the case either. Now, one thing that could, it could be is that maybe someone else is serving up the similar content that they're consuming in, uh, in uh, not in spite of, but uh, instead of his content. That is one thing you'll see sometimes on YouTube videos is you'll get like a big growth on your YouTube chart and it'll like just taper off. Like it looks like YouTube has just turned off the faucet of views. Uh, what's actually happening there is that people are more interested in a different type of content. So is there another person in this sword space or in this? Um, I'm not sure because like there, there are these different niches of YouTube, right? Like um, you've got the drama tubers, you've got the con, uh, you've got the travel YouTube, you've got the tech YouTube. Um, I'm not sure where swords falls into the actual algorithm. It might come into the same as actually, like it sounds kind of silly, but it might come into the same as anime and gaming. Particularly I say anime because I I know that he does do content to looking at like, like, ava like so talking about Avatar, The Hobbit, Rioni Kenshin, Mortal Kombat, One Piece, One Piece, Kimetsu no uh, Demon Slayer, One Piece. He may actually be placed into the anime section of youtube like youtube kind of groups you together like that and if that is the case then there could be that people that enjoy anime content and would maybe watch this one piece uh, my heart sword is it practical video they're watching something else they're watching like the new one punch man review or something even though i don't think there's a new one punch man now but uh, that's just for example that could be the case and without seeing all of his analytics there'd be no way to tell uh youtube has a very interesting little feat like i can actually show you something uh, like when I go into my analytics, I can show you something that's kind of troublesome for me, my channel in particular. <laughs> uh, all right. So when I go into my YouTube analytics page, okay, you can see here channels that your audience watches. Now, this is a very useful but very frustrating tab at the moment for me. So people that watch my channel also watch Potentially Criminal. I like Potentially. That's Sean. He's good. Uh, I don't know who Faxless RCT is. Uh, they watch Rakata Law, they watch Good Logic, they watch Legal Vices, uh, they watch Lord Back Law, Megan Fox, Aussie Overlord, MLS Law, uh, Alyssa Clips, Nick Starro, Annie, Danny Ann Direct, and Camelot uh, 331. Okay, so what this tells me about my channel is that YouTube has decided that my channel and my content is LawTube content, which is not great for me. 
Now, why would it? Why would I be in this section of YouTube? Because I talk to a lot of the people in LawTube. I like Sean. I like uh, Legal Vices, and uh, and who else was in there? I guess it's just and Jeff Legal Vices and uh, and uh, Good Logic. No, sorry, not Good Logic. Um, Andrew, I keep forgetting his I'm forgetting his channel's name. Uh, Legal Mindset, Legal Mindset. So most of my audience is in LawTube, and that's where my channel is placed. This is actually bad for me. This is, yeah, I'm a lawyer by association. It's very frustrating because lawyers have no souls, but also the kind of content I want to make at the moment doesn't actually fit into LawTube. Uh, so the last video I made was about uh, the Communist Party in Japan trying to ban sexy anime. That's not LawTube content. That's anime or movie review content, right? Um, or Japanese news. Uh, so that means that when my content is served to this audience, um, I'm going to get like a bad sort of retention and a bad click-through rate, which is very damaging to a channel. Now, there was a time, like when I was making the Lord of the Rings videos specifically, um, when this channel looked very different. I still had the, some of the same people, but I mostly had like people that were doing other um, film stuff. So it'd be like Nerdrotic or um, EFAP, or I guess that's not really, it's like Mauler's channel or whatever. There was like those sort of channels were popping up here. And that's where my channel should be for the content that I was making at that time. I mean, but to be fair, my content is a little bit schizophrenic where I kind of just talk about what I want to talk about. And that can be pretty dangering for your channel too. Now, where is Shad's content in the channels that your audience watches? We don't know. And I don't think he's going to show it to us, which is kind of annoying. But I think that would kind of um, give us a few pieces of information if he was willing to share it. And they're fun, great videos. Even the videos that did well have not resulted in any large subscriber growth. And those are the, like I said, the ones that did well with the subscriber base and the videos that uh, recently have uh, been devastatingly bad. How does something like this happen? One assumption is that it could be a sudden spike in unsubscriptions and the new subscribers don't uh, replenish the ones that are lost, leading to negative subscriber growth. Well, let me show you. We have had no sudden surge in unsubscriptions. Now, when you have a channel that's over a million subscribers, you lose a certain amount of subscribers every day. That's a, that's a perfectly run-of-the-mill normal. And so the standard rate of people unsubscribing from the channel, well, let me show you, is completely consistent and has been for over a year. Nothing has changed on that front. The spikes uh, that you see there, that comes from the occasional either controversy or video that uh, a number of your subscribers don't like. And I've made a couple of those, whether it's uh, criticizing Elden Ring or Nunchucks or I make a video on AI art. Yeah, there's a, a number of people that leave, but that's all. I can understand why people would leave for the AI stuff, but like... Why are people unsubscribing thanks to nunchucks? That's a bit of a weird thing. Is it like is nunchucks like the the verboten in the weapons community or something? Also, chat. I've seen some of your comments. I'm going to be talking about them later, specifically with the night watch and Friday night tight stuff. Thank you very much for sending information through and for those sort of comments. We will talk about that when it gets to that part of the video. All that happens, and it doesn't affect general normal unsubscribe rate of the channel, which is just the average amount of people that move past the channel and are not interested in watching anymore. It's when you see a sharp decline in subscriber growth that even with the normal amount of people unsubscribing from the channel obviously results in zero to negative subscribers coming to the channel. So this One thing that I will say is that when I typically see this sort of YouTube pattern, um, it's indicative of one thing, and that is you kind of betraying your audience. Now, I'm not saying that Shed is doing this. I'm a pro Shed. On, I'm pro Chad. What Shed? I'm pro Shed. But... For example, if you start talking about legal content and then you start talking about vacations to mysterious tropical islands, that can sometimes lead your audience to feel a little bit like you've been bamboozled, like you, you got them in the door with one thing and now you're doing something else. People don't like that and they kind of start unsubscribing. The funny thing about YouTube viewers is even if they do want to see that different kind of content, they don't like seeing it in that place. So for example, if you like train content and bird content, and I'm a trained YouTuber. I do actually have a video on trains coming up very quick, uh, very soon, by the way. But if I, if you subscribe to my channel for the train stuff, and then I start talking about the birds, even if you like bird content, you're going to unsubscribe from my channel because you expect my channel to be the train content guy, right? Like that's what you kind of, it kind of messes, like it's, it's like mixing everything up. It gets people very frustrated. YouTube viewers are very funny about this. 
and they don't like it when you switch in your audience. And that's typically what's happening with my channel, honestly, like, because I have a very similar growth chart to this one, wherein um, I have negative growth. Hold on a second. I'll, I'll even show you. So I can tell you that I'm not just talking out me ass. Uh, but let me see audience, uh, subscribers, and let's go to 90 days. Okay. It's actually kind of interesting because my chart is almost exact like this, like impression chart looks almost exactly like this. And we've got this big dip, you've got this big like peak, and then it just kind of like moves sideways. It's actually kind of ironic how I couldn't have planned this better. Whereas my new and returning viewers is kind of exactly the same. And that is understandable. I'm not angry at my audience for that because I'm not doing the content that they expect from me. That's just part and parcel of doing this sort of stuff is that I want to do the stuff that I want to talk about. That's not going to resonate with everyone. Now, there are ways to escape this cycle if this is indeed what is happening. Now, that's not saying that this is what's happening to Shed because, of course, I can't actually see what his his entire back end looks like. And if I did, then I could probably give you a more definitive answer. But one of the ways to escape this trend is to have an explosive viral video and then just keep doing that video or just keep doing what he knows is doing well in his YouTube channel. So if we go to his YouTube channel, so he's, um, all right, let's see. So you've got Katana is useless versus, all right, sorry, no, that's actually a good one. That's not a good one. All right, so he's got, is the Katana the hot girl of swords, sword, sword personalities? It's a bit of a weird title, right? But only 30,000 views. It might get more, you know, it's only four days old, right? But then you see he's got this big 200,000 view, like criticizing veratism. Why? So what this says is, if you have a big explosive video like this, which is doing better than your other videos, you got to double down on this video. So it seems that people really like it when he goes through, critiques someone else's ideas, and then gives actual the information about what it really is. So can he do more review videos where he reviews other, like exactly what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of reviewing his video and saying what I think about it and what could be right and what could be wrong. Be <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, people seem to really like that content. So double down on that content. That's one way. I wrote, like if you just get more views, you're going to get more subscribers. Um, these videos is kind of his bread and butter, though. Like I think like these thirty thousand view videos, like the Odachi versus Claymore, who would wins. That's like his his bread and butter content that he wants to keep doing. But do people want to watch that? I do. Like if we take a look at this video, the Odachi versus the Claymore. Again, Odachi is just a big. Guitar. Oh, it's really. Oops, sorry. Like this is well-produced content. It's interesting, right? People are just like cutting through bottles and stuff. Is there, maybe there just isn't a big market for this. This could be one of the answers. Again, there's going to be a lot of assumptions and conjecture here, but finding the actual answer is going to be very difficult, but it's just what we think and what we can try and get garnered from this information that we can see in front of us. Uh, also, Internet Guy with a $2. Thank you, Rachi. says, Shad seems creepy and like he would smell. I don't think that about that. That's that's your opinion, not mine. I don't think he smells. He seems like he's a regular, just an Aussie person. But most Australians do smell. As an Australian myself, I can say that. So I guess you might be right on the smell part. But I don't think he seems creepy. He's just like a dad. He's like a dad YouTuber. This result here is not due to a wave of people suddenly wanting to leave the channel because of any disagreement that we might have over politics, AI art, or, or nunchucks, or anything like that. And I want to repeat that because that's the thing that many skeptics and critics try to deny. Why They're was the... Okay, okay. someone in chat, please explain to me, what is the nunchuck thing? Why do people hate nunchucks so much? <laughs> the nunchuck fallout thing was huge? Why? But you're a, I'm a Kiwi. Uh, I'm half Australian, half Kiwi. So I can make fun of both cultures. There's been no increase in the average amount of people unsubscribing from the channel. Even with me being more politically outspoken on my other channel, Night Night's Watch, uh, what people don't seem to realize. All right, so we, we're going to put one conspiracy theory on the table. Um, I might bring up like a MS Paint so we can draw things around. Um, possible, like this is going to be very. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just make this into. There we go. That'll. There you go. All the people that are watching on dark mode. I saved your eyes. Uh, so let's see. We'll put one thing on the conspiracy table. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, we'll we'll call this. That's that's not a good. That's not a good brush, is it? Uh, who can recommend me a good brush in MS Paint? All right. Let's see. We'll put we'll put this under reasons. Okay. Possible reasons for the channel decline. So first is going to be a conspiracy theory. It is an election year. Now he has said that he's a Christian conservative. Is that the reason? It is an election year. Uh, election. Is he being suppressed? That 
This says election, not erection, hopefully. There we go. There we go. Could it be that easier conservative and YouTube is suppressing conservative thoughts up into the election? I'm going to say no, but it's not impossible. But here's the thing. Even though YouTube does engage in sometimes suppressing various content, this isn't the content that I would think that would be suppressed. Like there is no overt political opinions in the regular Shediversity content. It's just this sort is good or this sort is bad. And one of the things that's also kind of interesting about election years is you can get punished in election years if you're a conservative in particular, but you can also be rewarded. And uh, we know this because one of the channels that was in my recommend, uh, one of the one of the Lordship channels, Ricardo Law, he talked about when it was an election year, he got a big bump in YouTube ad revenue. Now, legal channels on as a whole have a very high CPM, or that which is the cost per million, the money you get from uh, making content. And I think Shed is very low, and I'm going to talk about again. That's going to be later in the video. Uh, but what actually happened in the 2020 election? is that there was all this election spending money from the conservative Trump campaign. And this was going to channels that only focused on conservative stuff. And there's a very easy reason to understand that is that, again, YouTube focuses on viewer satisfaction. And if you're watching a YouTube video on anime and you're on the left and you get a video for Trump, you get pretty mad. You might even turn off YouTube. So there's these very small group of channels which are considered conservative channels in the algorithm for YouTube that all this monetary funding went to. So a lot of these channels saw a big bump in the revenue they were making. Even if they may have been suppressed view-wise, they'll make an incredible killing on their revenue. Um, now, I don't think this is going to affect Shad's channel, as I said, because he doesn't focus on this political stuff. On this channel, he does have a second channel uh, where maybe he's more vocal about that. But I don't think that's going to be one of the answers. Now, Nick, a lawyer who stands to gain a lot of money as an election year, says, once you've seen 30 Sword versus Sword videos, how many more do you want to see? This is one of the issues that um, I think is going to come up with Shad's channel, honestly. Um, I will binge like his content. Like I'll maybe watch 10 videos in a row. And then I won't watch him for like four months. Because, yeah, I have a certain amount of content that I want to see that has to do with swords. And once I've seen that, I kind of I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch something else now. That may be one of the factors. And that may be one of the things that Shad is going to have to realize is that maybe the market for this content isn't as great as it used to be. Or maybe someone else is just doing it better. Or maybe it's just time to focus on something else. We'll have to see as we go through. Is uh, that for every person that can't separate the fact that I'm an outspoken conservative and Christian, um, uh, with the non-political content that we're making here on Shadowversity, in conjunction with that, is that Night's Watch is actually growing quite well and is bringing in new people to the audience and to my channels. It actually ends up balancing out and there's no big controversy or thing that's happening that's causing people to just leave. Now, this is very interesting. So now people in the chat were very kind and actually sent me some data. So let's have a look at that. There's this one. This is data from Social Blade. So Social Blade is a channel that is a, is a site that lets you analyze YouTube channels with some data. It's not 100% correct. Like it says here, like he's averaging like 20 to $300 a day. These numbers are very inaccurate in my experience. But the view data and the subscriber data is pretty good. So as we can see on Shediversity, monthly gain subscribers, he went up towards the end of September, then started to dip down. Oh, this is monthly videos gain, sorry. You can see this big drop off happening in, well, actually, let me see, subscribers. Yeah, it's just going down. Uh, then we look at the Night's Watch content. So this is the channel where he's more outspoken, more political. We can see that he's gaining subscribers, which is very... Wait, is he? Let me see. Let me see. Hold on a second. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, yeah. Overall, he's going and gaining there. So if he's gaining channels... If he's gaining views on one channel and he's losing on another, what does that tell us? It tells us that he's not being punished for who he is, but maybe the content is just not as interesting as the other one, the night watch stuff. The channel, now what this actually happens, okay, the result that causes this type of thing, the content itself is not getting shown to new viewers. This raises the question, why isn't the content being shown to new viewers? There must be some type of reason. Is it the quality of content? And some people have claimed that uh, Shadowversity has changed over the years. And my answer is, well, yes. Yes, it has. That's because it was necessary due to my health, as well as it being for the better. I've been able to raise the production value of the content and the, the feedback on this has been overwhelmingly positive. Remember, <sighs> 
I, I think he is correct in saying that the quality has gone up, but quality doesn't always doesn't always correlate with viewer satisfaction. Like uh, the the production quality on Saturday Night Live is fantastic. I don't watch Saturday Night Live because I'd rather listen to someone on YouTube. On, on ironically, like there is a lot of TV shows that have great production values, but they're just not interesting. Um, and that's unfortunate. Now, like I said, I do like Shad's content. I just don't consume that much of it. That could be the problem. And that's another thing that happens for a lot of YouTubers is that when you're a small YouTuber, you're a guy, just a guy in a room, like I'm a guy in a bedroom right now. Um, it's relatable. You know, it's very, very relatable. It's like, this is a guy who's just giving him, giving his straight opinions. And it's, it's almost like a friend. It's like, you know, it's like, it's very like easy to get into. Now, when you move up to like this sort of content where you have like three presenters and it's like, like this, honestly, like this sort of content could probably be on Discovery Channel. Uh, when you've got like, if you think about like Mythbusters or something, this is almost like the level of production quality you might see on like Mythbusters or an early, like, you know, 20, 2010 sort of Discovery Channel. I know people are going to argue like, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. It, it honestly basically is. Um, this could be stuff that's on on TV. But when, when you have something that looks like it could be on TV, it kind of loses that personal appeal. Now, that could be one of the reasons. Are people no longer subscribing because it's not shared anymore? It's like it, it's more of a production quality that seems a little bit impersonal and cold. That can be one of the issues with growing a YouTube channel is you want to make it the best content. You want to make it the, the highest production value, like the best information. But in the way, sometimes you lose that personal appeal that people subscribe to in the first place. And if that's the case, that can lead to mass unsubscriptions or people just like ghosting you essentially. And like I said, if you stop watching a channel for a few weeks, a few videos, uh, YouTube's not going to recommend it to you anymore because YouTube's number one priority is to satisfy the viewer, not the creator. Uh, which is which is a bit sad though, because you know when you think about it, he's putting a lot of work into this. He's pouring his heart and soul into this content, and maybe it's just not resonating. And that's again, it can be a very sad realization sometimes that maybe what you think is good isn't necessarily what the audience think is good. And this is something that I have dealt with quite a lot. Um, I spent two months making a documentary that I'm very proud of to this day. I think it's great. I think it's it's cinematic. It's it's uh, it's it's emotive. It's evocative. It's got cute animals in it. How could anyone not like it? It's got less than a thousand views. Then I talk about like, um, you know, how to spend a few days in Tokyo, and it gets hundreds of thousands of views. Because why? Because people. I was interested in the documentary. Nobody else necessarily was, but people are interested in how to spend time in Tokyo, so they'll watch that instead. Um, coming to that realization was a bit of like a, a bit of a like it was very important, I think, in my YouTube sort of journey, which isn't over yet, but. You've got to make content that people want to see. These videos, if you watch them, they might be the they might be fantastic, but how are you going to sell them? How are you going to market them? Right, that might be one of the issues. That this sharp drop in suddenly the content not being recommended to any new viewers happened recently. It happened in January. Okay, the changes I made with Shadowversity to bring on new hosts happened two years ago. All right. And we have made some incredible content as a multi-host channel. Videos that have gotten hundreds of thousands of views. Ones that are already nearly in the millions. Videos that people have loved. And that is the content we are currently making. We're making content that people genuinely love. And that longtime subscribers on Shadowversity also really love. So the current content isn't actually the problem. And the to make that sort of statement, I don't think that he has enough information to come to that conclusion. Sometimes there is a trend. Sometimes people just get tired of like like some uh, Nick said earlier in the in the channel is like maybe there's only so many sword versus sword videos you can consume and then you don't want to watch it anymore. That could be one of the issues. But to say that it's not the content, I feel like he's um, maybe too emotionally invested in the creation to consider that that is the issue. The quality that we've been pushing out has only been going up because that was one of the things I've been trying to do to bring back views, make better content. We've been pushing ourselves so hard to raise the quality. By the way, I, I'm probably going to sound pretty critical, but I do think that a lot of the things he's saying are true. Um, I do think he's working hard. I do think he's pouring his heart and soul into this. And it's sad that it's not you know, resonating with people, maybe. Or maybe he is being suppressed. We're going to try and find that out as we go along. But... Sometimes that's how it is. Level, but something else is happening behind the scenes 
to not let our current subscribers know not only about the new content, but the old content. Uh, and the subscribers is just not a re reliable model. You can't just say that because I have this many subscribers, that means you're going to get content uh, served into their feeds. It's just not the way YouTube works anymore. Um, YouTube is actually talked internally and uh, they were they talked about it openly for a while as well about getting rid of the subscriber account entirely and just having video views. Um, YouTube typically also doesn't actually blow up channels. It blows up individual videos. And if it happens that all your content is around the same topic, then your other content can grow at the same time as well. There's other things like viewer habits and things, which is important if you're a personality focused content channel. Um, but I'm not sure that's the case here. Although I, I will notice that there are some videos where Shed is very much not in the video, or maybe he's behind the camera. And I find that content not as interesting because it's Shedversity. I expect to see Shed on the channel. If it's like the two co-hosts, which are, they're very good. Don't get me wrong. These two guys are great. Um, but it's it's Shed's channel. And that's what I'm expecting to see. Like, it's almost, um, again, is this guy Shed's son? I'm not sure. I, I heard he had five kids, but I always just thought this was Shed's son or something. I don't know. I don't know. But when I when I see these two guys talking on screen for a long time, I'm going to be honest. My interest kind of kind of dips down. Um, don't get me wrong; they're very good personalities in their own right, and maybe they'd be better served doing their own channels. Uh, they're very skilled swordsmen. Um, they've got some like when you watch the beginning of the video where they're like cutting they're cutting arrows out of the air or they're um, shooting apples and things. They're skilled swordsmen, and that can be good content. But if you're looking for Shad's content, like you want Shad, you want to see Shad then if you see these two guys, that might be leading to a dip early in the video. And you can actually see where people are watching the most in these videos, which is kind of interesting. But if you say, let's see, so this video, actually, you know, this is actually a really good example. So the first scene of any people in this video is the two other guys. So I guess Nate and Tyrant. I've actually never seen their names before. Um, so this is the whole thing. It starts with the Shediversity logo, and then it's these two guys. When does Shed show up in the content? Does he even show up at all? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm eight minutes in, and I'm gonna add I, two two more weeks, guys, and then I get the um, then I get the YouTube ad block. I'm not at I mean the YouTube premium, so I won't have to watch ads. Of course, don't block ads. I don't think Shed shows up in this entire video. Yeah, the entire video. There's no the Shed doesn't show up in the entire video. Um, when I see that, like on a channel, okay. I'm gonna be honest, like that Can kind of. What? That kind of makes me not want to watch the content, um, because even if it's not the case, like it's not the case that this is like when I see this, like when I see like a channel like like Shad's, and then there's two people that aren't Shad. I feel like did his channel get bought? Did did he sell his channel? These two guys are making content now because whenever I see a YouTube channel get bought and it's not the original creator, I immediately unsubscribe. That could be one of the issues is that Shad's just not appearing in the videos as much from January, because that's what I mean. He's made his entire channel him Shadiversity. It's him Shad. If you don't see Shad in the video, then I can understand entirely why people would be unsubscribing. Now, especially like I was going through, I was hoping that Shad would show up at like the five minute mark or something so I could make a point on this, but he actually didn't show up at all. Um, if you are here for the Shad content and you get to two minutes in the video and there's no Shad, you stop watching the video. This says YouTube, this sends a signal to YouTube saying this user was not satisfied with their viewing product. They are not interested in this content. Stop recommending this content to them. That could this could actually be the answer right now. We may have just found it out. If I go through his videos from January and he's just not in them as much, because he said he has like a disa a disability or something, um, so maybe he just can't physically. And again, like that's that's terrible. But um, that could be one of the that could be the main reason. Not showing it to new audiences. Current click through rates on our content are actually higher than two years ago. The likes versus dislikes are actually still in the high 90%. Like nothing has dropped in the likes versus dislike. Feedback in the comments are overwhelmingly positive about. This is also kind of like a tricky thing is that if people aren't watching as much, people are much less likely to leave a negative comment than to just stop watching. Like if you like the content or if you see that the content's good and there's something to talk about, it's very easy to say nice background or nice swords or something like that, right? But if a, if a content is not interesting to the viewer, they might just click off immediately and then they won't leave it. They won't leave a dislike. They won't leave a comment. They won't leave anything. They'll just leave. So then you're in this weird situation where you've got like 90% positive content, positive feedback, and you don't know why people are leaving. They're like, everybody likes the content. Why are they leaving? It's because the people that don't like the content are just leaving quietly. And that's, um, again, very tricky and very... Uh, it makes it very hard to analyze what's going wrong on your channel is if people aren't leaving negative comments. How much they're enjoying the content. And if the content was the issue with the death spiral, it looks like Shadowversity is falling into. I think death spiral is like a, a very... 
it's a strong word. Like he's getting a dip in views. It's not necessarily going to go down to zero. Maybe he's just uh, settling into a more, a, a different group. Like he's he's kind of got his own audience. They're happy to watch his content forever, uh, but it's going to be lower than the past. Like sometimes you go on these big peaks and then you have the lows as well. I mean, that's part of life and not everyone like stays at the top forever. And that's okay if you can make it a viable business. I would have seen um, our content suffer a similar drop on other platforms like TikTok, Facebook, Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble. And by the way, when we started uploading on TikTok, our content exploded. We have over 100,000 subscribers on there over a very short period of time. I mean, that that's good. But like the problem is that having 100,000 subscribers on TikTok doesn't actually equal very much. It sounds great. It sounds fantastic, right? But... Uh, <laughs> I know someone who had 200,000 subscribers on TikTok. They didn't make any money from it. And they deleted, their, they deleted their channel because it was just like, it was pointless to have it. TikTok is very finicky when it comes to monetization. And while it sounds like a lot of people, like 200,000 on YouTube is fantastic. 200,000 on TikTok isn't actually that much. You need, if you're doing short form content, you need hundreds of millions of views to make it profitable. It's kind of crazy. Like if I get like a million views on a short, that's probably less valuable than having 10,000 videos on a regular video. It grew crazy fast with millions of views, but overall, no real growth on the platforms that matter in terms of getting higher ad revenue because you don't... Yeah, like, as much as people want to... Like, a lot of people have some criticism of YouTube, and I do myself as well. YouTube is the premier platform to create on because it makes monetization and payouts the easiest. Like, I think on, like, Rumble, when Rumble first came... I, don't, I mean, I've never used Rumble. I mean, just I've watched things on Rumble. I haven't made a Rumble account. I heard that you had to, or maybe it was locals, I don't know. Uh, you had to actually manually select payout or something. It wasn't just automatically done like YouTube does. Like YouTube is so easy. That's why it's the number one platform because it's just super simple to upload content for free and get paid for it for free, provided people are watching your stuff. That's what makes YouTube so powerful. And that's the challenge of all these new platforms like Rumble or Kick or locals or whatever is um, they don't offer as much monetary incentive. Uh, I think Kick's actually doing pretty good, but like they've got some shady gambling stuff behind the scenes that kind of funds them. So it's a little bit different, a little bit different. Money on TikTok, and there was really no point in sacrificing the man hours to keep pushing on that when we're suffering on the main area that we need to focus on. Having said that, though, we do try and mirror our content on other platforms. YouTube broke mirroring on Rumble specifically, and so we haven't been able to put our content on that, but we're making active changes to now manually upload on Rumble as well. This shouldn't be a hard thing to do, honestly. Like, you have the same video file, you have the same metadata. I'm sure you could just upload to Rumble, click upload, copy the thumbnail, copy the data. It can't take that long, like probably like 10 minutes or something. But again... Um, maybe just get an intern to do this. Like, you know, get someone that's paid like a percentage of the channel earnings on Rumble and say, look, your responsibility is to manage the Rumble channel. You'll get 10% of all the earnings on this channel. It's very little work, but there's potentially a very big upside in uh, managing this content. Maybe get one of the kids to do it, right? You know, something like that. Get the family members to do it if you don't have enough time yourself because delegating is a very important part of growing these sort of businesses. But the issue is, is that currently there is no viable, sustainable alternative to YouTube. We don't make money on any of these other platforms. Because even if you want to try and say that there's something... I mean, yes and no. YouTube is the best. But YouTube ad revenue should not be the majority of your content creation portfolio. Um, a lot of people that I have talked to and a lot of the things that I have seen suggest that you should be getting less than 50% of your income from YouTube. Um, now, I say this as someone who receives more than 50% of my even you, my income from YouTube, um, but that's because I'm not correctly monetizing my channel at the moment, but I'm still doing it pretty good, right? I'm still doing pretty good, but that means that I am under the... I'm under the shoe of YouTube. If they decide to demonetize me, that's going to be pretty bad for me. That's going to be pretty, pretty bad, you know? Um, so where do you get these monetary streams from? Like, it seems like there's a view problem here. There's also a monetary problem here. Now, of course, if your views are going down, that could be indicative that the channel is dying and it's going to be all gone soon. But if the channels are going down, but your revenue is going up, like if you're going to make a fan-funded model or you're taking more sponsorships, that could be the way to do it. And you can survive in that way. There are a lot of channels that have a very small subscriber base, but they're making millions of dollars because they're monetizing their stuff in the right way. 
different with the new content versus the old content. If you look at the most popular videos on the channel, these super popular uh, videos look at that in a are getting job. viewed currently a fraction, and I mean a fraction of what they have been getting viewed two years ago and even four years ago. And by the way, that was when my channel was even vastly smaller, okay? Yet I was getting vastly higher views on these popular videos. You would think with a larger subscriber base that there would be a large amount of people to recommend these old videos to, but the new subscribers, and by the way, in like the last two years, gained over maybe 350,000 new subscribers, and most of them do not get recommended the old content at all. Uh, there's a very simple reason for why this might happen, and it's a, again, it's one of those things that is kind of like a blessing, and uh, but a also a bit of a curse is that when you have a viral piece of media, so if we go to Shad's channel, let's go to popular channel videos. Five years ago, he got 5 million views on this video. Uh, maybe this is a good example. Like in theory, most of his subscribers would come from this video. Massive and um, but ever since I'm just going to mute it so we can go through it. So it's like Shad, simple setup, simple setup, sword, Shad, information. This is the content that people in theory are, are subscribing for. You've got like this is very cute. It's like a little um, little castle, and it's got like a kid slide in it. I guess his kids use it. That's, that's adorable, right? This is very relatable content. This is a dad in his backyard talking about swords, right? Um, if the majority of the people come from this seven million subscribe, a uh, seven million view video, and then the more recent content, even if the production values are higher, but it's just these guys um, who are professionals doing this sword stuff, maybe you're not interested in that anymore. And again. If I go to my own content as an example, so as we saw earlier, I am currently in the LawTube adjacent space because of the channels that my audience watches. Um, I have this video here. Uh, just give me, there we go. Okay. So I have a video with about 3,000, oh, sorry, 3 million views. It's got 3 million views and it gave me 3,000 subscribers. That's a lot of subscribers, right? But that's talking about Marvel Cinematic stuff. Those 3,000 people are not going to watch Laura Jason stuff. They're just not because they subscribed for this different topic. Maybe there's a tiny fraction of people that will come back, but uh, it's not necessarily going to be the case, right? Um, also, I think Shad does some short content, and short content watches don't translate very well to long-form content in some situations. Like, he's got, like, some 10 million on this short, seven million on this short, six million, six million. Like he's doing very well on shorts. And this is what happens when you do shorts a lot is that you get a lot of subscribers from shorts, but that doesn't necessarily translate into monetary gain. And that can be, again, a blessing and a curse. At first you think, or a blessing in disguise, I should say, really. At first you think you've got, oh, I've got 100,000 subscribers. But if those 100,000 subscribers can't be converted to your other model, then you're in trouble. Or at least you're where, exactly where you are. And you start getting frustrated because you think, like, why do I have all these subscribers that don't care about my content? It's because they subscribe for something else. That's It's as simple as that. They're just not getting what they want. So they decided to subscribe, but then they forgot about it. And it just goes back into their into their feed. They don't watch a few videos. And then you stop showing up on their feed at all. So they don't know you're subscribed anymore. I mean, you don't see the content. There's no reason for you to unsubscribe because you're just not seeing it anyway. right? You have to actually see a video to unsubscribe from it. That could be the case here. Um, now, there is a way to convert short viewers into long-form viewers, and there have been some channels that have done that very successfully. We'll see if Shad is one of those people as we go through as well. Servals with another $5 video says, here is more fan funding uh, for you since I've been missing an action for school recently. Well, thank you very much. Spend that at a nice maid cafe. Um, I'll, I'll probably spend it on more of these uh, yuzu shoes. So the yuzu is a Japanese citron, and it's like a little bit of uh, liquor in it. It's quite nice. They're quite tasty. They're a bit girly, like a little bit sweet. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I'm a bit sweet myself just emphasize the stark and I mean shocking difference and reduction that we have had in impressions currently on the channel I want to show you the rate in which some of the most popular videos on Shadowversity um, get watched now versus only you know a couple of years ago and bear in mind over the past two years we have an additional 350,000 subscribers again subscribers that's it's a trick subscribers are almost like an illusion um especially if they subscribe from your shorts or something um so again it sounds really infuriating if you're a youtuber or even if you just have like common sense you're like well this person subscribed to me of course i gotta watch my content it doesn't work like that um youtube content is currently only pushed to videos uh, where they think you're gonna watch them or if you watch them in the past okay 
And so the channel, as is at the moment, we have a huge, that's one of the largest subscriber growth I've had in a long, like over at the periods, you know, similar periods of time. So that's a huge boost of new viewers, right? Usually when you get a boost of new subscribers, there's a whole heap of backlog content that they enjoy. And as a result, these popular videos, they continually get viewed because there's a constant flow of new subscribers to watch. There's those new subscribers there, but they're not getting recommended the content. Here is my most popular video I've ever made. Over 7 million views oh. on this one. And Data, yes, delicious. In the past month, it has had 2.4 thousand views. During this same time period, let's uh, go back. To All right, no, let's not go back just yet. This is very interesting. So this is that 7 million uh, view video that we saw just a moment ago. Uh, so in the last seven days, actually, I'll go back a couple frames so that we can see. There we go. Oh, no, this is the last 28 days. That's actually really surprising. So in the last 28 days, the last YouTube works on a 28-day model for, for its monetization thing. So basically the last month. I know a month is like 31 days or whatever. Um, but the last month, we'll call this. So he's got 2,000 views, uh, 196 watch hours, eight subscribers, and $6. This seems low to me. Like this ad revenue seems very low to me. Um, hold on a second. So I'm going to have a quick look at my other YouTube channel. Um, I do it on this. Like I can't log out of my YouTube channel while I'm streaming because I'm not going to use this channel that I'm streaming on. Now I'm going to use my other channel um, because that's a much more successful channel. Um, but no, it's because I want more data on that channel. Any more, more data? All right, all right. Let's see. So if I go to my other YouTube channel, I have a video with 8,000 views. Okay, so 8,000 views. Actually, is that a good example? 3,000. Let's see if I can find one that's got the same amount of views. Uh, okay. We, well, I'll use this one. I'll use this one. Revenue. Uh, okay. Oops. Sorry. That's the wrong one. Damn it. I have to use my phone. I wish I could do this on my desktop. It'd be much more much more simple. So he's got about 3,000 views. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this play while I'm looking at this so I can make a better, better view. During the same time period, it's... Uh go back two years, but in the exact same time period, two years ago, 2022. Over that same time period, that video had 16.9 thousand views. Okay, this is actually much better than, a, than a, I'm glad I let the video play. All right, so I have a video with 8,000 views. So half of the 16,000 we're looking at on the screen now, um, and we can make a direct comparison to this video, which would be very nice, very nice. All right, so this, my video with 8,000 views, which is half of what he has here, gained less subscribers. So I gained 30, I, sorry, I gained, I had half as many and I gained 35. So actually the subscribers are on the same, about the same, uh, but I gained $45. So hold on, we're just gonna put this on the screen for a second. So uh, let me just do this a bit. This is the more, number heavy part of the stream i guess so he got he had so we have 16k for this is for shad 16k plus 83 subs and he gained 32 dollars okay so that's shad stats i gained 8000 views so more or less half i gained 35 subscribers so plus 35. So if we doubled that, it'd be 70. So about the same, you know, like give or take 10, right? But I gained $45. So what this is telling me is that either Shad is not monetizing his content correctly. And there are a few ways to do this, um, specifically ad placement. Um, when you place, when you have a video that's over eight minutes on YouTube, you can choose to place ads. If it's under eight minutes, then it's automatic. Uh, but when you have ad placement, you can say, put strategic ad breaks into your content. Um, obviously before the video starts, after the video ends, and then you wanna put a mid roll somewhere in the content. Uh, it's usually best to try and put it in like around like a hook. Like if you have like a cliffhanger, it's almost like a TV show, right? Like just before the ad break hits, something interesting happens so that it keeps you coming back after it. Now, when you place an ad in a video, like I've just said an example of three ads, that doesn't necessarily mean three ads are going to play on the video. Those are just optional placement for the ads. Um, it's very strange to me that I'm making almost twice as much. Like if I if I double my stats, then that would be to, to equal him, it would be 16, 70, more or less the same, but then I would be gaining almost three times what he's earning. So is his niche, 
in a such a unprofitable niche that he's earning less money than me or is it because he's incorrectly monetizing we don't know without being able to see his stats this is very strange to me um but what this tells me is that i can i'm going to just rub out elections here for a moment what this tells me is that i have an idea of how many how much his cpm is now so from this information i can now look at his channel and we're going to go to a site called view stats view stats is like um view stats is like social blade although i like it better for a for a few reasons i think it's actually made by mr beast i'm not sure uh and i want to go to shed adversity shed adversity shed adversity there it is shed adversity all right so looking at his stats in his last month his last 28 days he's gained 1.9 million views now let me see my stats on my other channel so if he's getting one point so hold on a second you're never supposed to do math on screen right you're never supposed to all right so on my last 28 days i got 225,000 views on my other channel so let's see that means and you can you can check my work in the chat okay so he's got 1.6 a uh, 1.9 million uh, I got 200 uh, 225,000, 225,000. So he's getting eight times as many views as me, okay? That means if I time my revenue for last month, I can see how much I would be earning. So if I was getting the amount of, uh, so I want to times, wait, do I want to do that? Do I want to times it like that? If I was monetized, oh, wait, no, sorry. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. If I was being paid the same as Shadow's being paid, then that means that I would be, let's see, it's like, oops, sorry. So if I was getting Shed's numbers, I'd be getting about $14,000. Yeah, okay, this actually works, this works. So if I was getting 1.9 million views a month, I'd be being paid $14,000, but Shed's got about, about a third. So when I died this by a three, so we can assume that Shad is earning about $4,000 to $5,000 a month in ad revenue on YouTube. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that makes sense. So we're gonna, aver we're gonna um, average Shad's last uh, month to 5,000 in YouTube dollar dues a month. So let's see. So we're gonna put his average for Shad. Average, that's not how you spell average, but okay, whatever. We'll say 5K. Uh, five thousand dollars okay if he's got three employees five thousand dollars is not a lot of money uh there we go let's continue just compare that 2.4 to 16.9 now let's compare that to 2020 another two years so this is four years that's ago. my intelligence have a look at how much this average, video average, um, yeah. got viewed four years ago 72,000 views. Wait, 72,000 views? $80? That's insanely low. Like, that's kind of crazy. Hold on a second. It's actually very useful that I just happen to have a YouTube channel that has a lot of different view counts. Let, let me see. Do I have a viewed video with 80,000 views? Uh, I've got some close to that range. Is... Will the chat accept... Will the chat accept... Um, Will the chat accept? I'm trying to find. Let's see. A hundred thousand. No, the chat won't accept a hundred thousand. Is there an analog for that? Forty thousand. Okay, I've got forty-one thousand views. That's basically half, right? Um. So he got. So I got a video with forty-one thousand views, which is more or less half of what he's got here. He earned six hundred, almost six hundred sixty-six subscribers from that. Um. I got. Let me see. Audience. Uh. Actually, where is? Where is it? Why isn't it showing my audience? God damn it. Overview. Subscribe. Where's the subscriber rate? Come on now. Watch time. All right. So I gained almost the same, about 500 subscribers, which is kind of interesting. It means he's got a low subscribe rate, in my opinion, compared to me, uh, which is kind of strange. But for 40, 41,000, I gained $362, which is like basically five times what he's earning it's kind of crazy like why is his revenue so low like was this during like the adpocalypse or like like something what's going on here this is very strange to me 
to see like 72,000 views for $80. That's insane. That's insanely low. Like, it's kind of crazy, actually. This is a great video that heaps of people enjoy watching that now is barely getting recommended at all, not even to my own new subscribers that would love this content, this video, but it's not getting recommended. And please bear in mind, YouTube as a platform keeps growing. Reckon it's as a weapon thing. It could be larger. <laughs> its user base is larger than it has ever. Like you can actually, you can actually see what different types of genres bring in on YouTube. Like the number one is finance and like makeup products, uh, because those people either have people who watch finance content have a lot of money to spend, so it's very valuable to advertise to them. People that wear makeup will spend money just on makeup because they, you know, they've got to fix their bum face or whatever. Um, but yeah, like there's actually, let's see if we can find it. Because the funny thing is that gaming is one of the lowest. And I wonder if sword content is kind of in that niche of like gaming anime weapons. Maybe that's in the same area. Let me see. Uh, YouTube payout by niche. This should be actually pretty easy to find. The highest paying CPM niches. There's a lot of articles on this actually. I want a, I want a nice list, a nice list though. Um, this is that, oh, okay. This is very interesting. Okay, there's like twenty. We'll go through this. Though. Okay, the highest. Apologies, people that are watching in the dark room. You're about to be blinded, like I am now. So the twenty, the worst average CPM. So this is views. Like if you get a thousand views, you get this much money. Um, so for a thousand views in cooking, apparently you get three dollars fifty. That's kind of that's kind of crazy. That's low. That is low. I would have thought that'd be higher though. Like rip rip Rooney cooking mamas out there. Animals is the second lowest at about $5. Fashion is $5. Photography and filmmaking, $6.5. Natural remedies. Why are you? Why is natural remedies so high? Like surely natural, natural remedies should be cheap. You just go out and pick some grass out of your backyard. Uh, entertainment. Entertainment is like TV shows, right? So $7. That's not too bad, actually. I was I was actually surprised. Where is game? I thought gaming would be the lowest because I thought gaming was like 2 to $3, at least at the last time I checked. Because I used to do gaming content as well. And I know from experience, lifestyle seven point five, DOI slash repairs nine dollars, uh, te technology and gadgets nine dollars. I'd expect technology to be higher actually. Uh, gaming ten dollars. I don't believe. All right, this list cannot be correct. This list cannot be correct. I don't believe that uh, gaming pays out ten dollars per thousand views. Every time I've seen my own gaming experience, it's been like three dollars. I think this list is not very accurate. But let me see the number one list. Oh, you have to click on another. Uh, no, no. We're not clicking another link to go like this. With this list is now gone, gone. If you're going to try and get two page clicks out of me for the one answer I searched for, you're gone. You're gone. All right, let's see if we can find something else. Two buddy, two buddy is probably more reputable because they. Um... All right, here we go. This is this is better, but it's not as informative. Okay, so two buddy is a YouTubing app. You can. I actually don't use two buddy anymore. I used to. Um, I use VidIQ. So vidIQ gives you some neat, like if you're a YouTuber, you might find this interesting, but like, so when I go to channel, you see they've got this thing here. That's a vidIQ plugin. When I click on this, I can look at his training videos. This is a very useful tab, by the way. Um, this shows me what video people are watching on his channel. It's And it's showing me that the number one content on his channel is YouTube is killing this channel. Setiversity is dying and it's getting 1600 views per hour. This is a very useful stat if you're a YouTuber because you can look at content on a channel like Shad's because like I said, he's got a very, he's got 800 videos, right? 800 videos. And his number one video is the sword drawing from the back, the one that he's talking about right now. Now, while this has 7 million views, nobody's watching it right now, which means that like, he's got a lot of amount of views and then it kind of got archived into the back room of YouTube where it's probably not going to see a resurgence again, but it could happen. It could happen. Now, if you're a YouTuber and a competitive YouTuber, particularly like, let's say, uh, well, we got Nick in the chat right here. He's a he's a law tuber, right? My profitable video have a eight dollar RPM. Most viewed video has ninety one. My most viewed video has a ninety nine cents RPM. The pr tricky thing here is you might be covering content that is in uh, non American countries, and the revenue dips down if you're talking about non American countries. But like for let's say Nick, he could go to a law channel. And then he could use this vidIQ stat and say, okay, this law channel has a 5 million views on Johnny Depp content. But if you go to trending videos and you see that there's 5 million, but it's 5 million on the Johnny Depp video, but there's only one view per hour, that means that that topic is dead. Like it got a lot of views in the past, but it's no longer in the public zeitgeist. It's not going to be profitable to make a content in that niche. But if you see that the, uh, what's another law thing? Uh, 
Taylor Shabizness. business. If you see that Taylor Shabizness business is getting like thousands of views per hour, that's a good topic to pick for your next video. This is how you can use these sort of YouTube stats anyway. But again, that's like kind of not here or there. So going to the tube buddy, which is basically the same as vidIQ, we can see these different niches. We can see that the number one gaming, or the number one niche is making money online, like I said. Uh, that is $13 per CPM. Also, CPM and RPM is a little bit different, Nick. Um, CPM is what they display, it, what you're getting paid, and RPM is what you actually get paid. Um, it's kind of an annoying little difference there, but you have to you have to figure out what those are. Um, digital marketing is number two, personal finance number three. So these are all like money marketing stuff, business stuff, right? Educational content, number four. Tech and gadgets, number five. This makes more sense, actually. ASMR and anything else, that's kind of funny. That's kind of funny, but ASMR gets between $10 and $3. Lifestyle, fashion, beauty, motivational, cooking, travel, fitness, bodybuilding. Gaming is the second worst. That's actually exactly where I thought it would be. But the very worst one is actually comedy with one th $1 per thousand views. That's actually very sad. Oh my God, my poor comedians out there. Uh, but gaming, yeah, it's pretty low. Gaming is like two to three dollars in my experience. But this is kind of interesting. I didn't know there was something worse than gaming on the YouTube uh, payout uh, payout thing. Comedy is the worst. There's probably a reason for this. Um, it's because comedy videos are kind of in the same space as uh, podcasting. So, like, if you think about like the Joe Rogan experience, it gets millions and millions of views. There's a lot of copycats, and they're all like comedians that are running their own podcast. They get a lot of passive views, but not a lot of uh, engagement. So people turn those on as background noise. Uh, they listen to them at work, but they don't click on the ads like you would in uh, different content. So that could explain why that's very low. The reason gaming is so low is because gaming is just one of the most prolific things on the entire platform. Um, if there's more of it, there's less money to go around. Now, people that are making money online, they typically go to videos look with guides and um, then they're like, you know what? I'm going to click on this, like, you know, 401k investment or whatever it is Americans do. But uh, yeah, it is surprising to me that comedy is actually so low. But there you go. There you go. Those are the different niches. So I wonder, I wonder if Shad is either monetizing his videos incorrectly, which could be, a, this could be the solution to his problem, actually. Or it could be that he's just also in the same niche as gaming or comedy. I don't know. Like, where do you put sword content in those sort of things? I don't think there's a lot of market for sword advertisement. Like there, of course, you can get sponsorships and things, but uh, I don't know. How well the feet picks pay? Uh, among the highest, among the highest, Andrew. Uh, there you go. Been before, okay? There are entire new generations of people coming to YouTube that very well would love this content. In theory. It's not getting shown like, to them. Like, I think that my content is fantastic. But if people aren't watching my content, how do I know that is the truth? So while Shed's content has done well in the past, just because you say that your video is good, maybe it was good when you released it. This is a five-year-old video. Like the, the landscape of YouTube has changed. It might just not, it might just be that the YouTube audience has changed and they're not interested in that content. And while you think it was good, and it was good in the time, like this is it was good content, but does it appeal to the average viewer now? And if the answer is no then you can't say, well, my content's good, they should be watching it. It is a little bit entitled. Um, but again, I can kind of empathize quite a bit with him because I have sometimes spent months working on videos and then seen no reward from it. And does that mean that I was cheated? No, it just means that I focused on something that I wanted to do and it didn't resonate with anyone else. Or maybe I marketed it incorrectly. Like maybe this YouTube thumbnail just does it. Like when I see like YouTube thumbnails are so important. And when we see this video, proof, drawing sword from the back, like, does this, like, when I see this, like, when I see this thumbnail, I don't want to click on it. Because I, like, what is, what is the, in, like, a thumbnail has to have intrigue. That's what, and like, even though I'm saying this, doesn't mean that I always do it, right? Um, like, when you see a video, like, does he know? Like, if you, if you change this to, like, does he know? It's like, that's like the meme, right? Everyone's, I think a lot of people have seen this one. It's like, does he know what? You have to look on the video to find out. This video says proof. Proof, like, I'm not going to click on this because I don't need proof of what? That a guy's got a sword? Like, there, there's a little bit of a question, like, what is it the proof of? But it doesn't entice me to click. That's the problem with this, this thumbnail. Um, when you have, like, dead content like this, like content that you think is very good or is just not receiving views anymore, you can actually change the thumb, thumbnail and change the the title around, thumbnail title, and you can sometimes get um, a lot of better um, uh, um, 
response from it, right? Um, very interesting thing. This is why I like view stats more than um, tube, uh, more than um, tube buddy and um, social blade is they have something you can actually look at the AB testing. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it for here, but like uh, I, this, here's a channel that I know that does this. Uh, hold on. So AB testing on thumbnails is very important. So there's a channel called Abroad in Japan. Um, who does similar content to the do, do my channel? He does Japan content. If we look at his video analytics, I'll see if I can find one. There should be an example. Uh, okay, open change gallery. We can see different changes in how this is working. So it's very similar. Like it's very similar here. I, let me see if I can find another one that's more uh, obvious. Okay, here we go. Japan's snowiest tone. All right. So we can see the original thumbnail versus the newest one. So he originally was called Japan's snowiest village. He changed that to Japan's snowiest town. This seems like such a simple change, but this may have resulted in this video going viral. We don't know because we have to seal. Like there's there's over ten different changes to the thumbnail and title here. So let's let's see the first one. You can actually see very minute changes, right? And these subtle changes might not seem like a lot. A lot. Like the first one was him like with the handcuffs. I survived Japan's snowiest mountain town winter road trip. The last one is I spent a day in Japan's snowiest town winter road trip. It sounds very similar, but it's like there's subtle differences. And you can see he's got like the beanie on, so it's the cold weather. If this equals a 1% like increase in click-through rate, that could mean the difference in hundreds of thousands of views in the long term. The difference between a 7% click-through rate video and an 8% is in incredible. Now, is Shad doing that on his videos? Like I can, this is a good example. So we're going to go back now to Shad uh, and see, is he doing this with, oh, go back, go back, go back, Shadiversity, here we go. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to his uh, katana versus armor. Is it useless? Open change gallery. Looks like he made a slight change. You see that? He's, he's got the katana versus knight. He's changed it to more him on the left, him on the right. A, B testing. And we can see these different changes. So he is doing a little bit of that. So we know that he is. And this is actually a feature that's being rolled out into all YouTube users um, when you upload a thumbnail. You might not have this available yet, but you can actually upload two thumbnails and YouTube will do A-B testing for you by itself. Uh, but you can also just do this manually and see how it responds. So there's a few changes. So maybe this could be the answer is he needs, maybe he needs to make his new thumbnails in line with his old ones. So if we look at this new one, if he makes this more like his old ones, maybe that will link those videos together. So if you click on the, is the Katana the hot girl of all swords, then you get uh, recommended maybe this channel. You're like, is this the same guy? Maybe, maybe not. Um, that's why it's very good to have a consistent thumbnail uh, scheme. Because like I said, most people aren't going to subscribe to you these days. So it's good to have this sort of recognizable font, recognizable, uh, you know, yourself in the in the title is very useful as well. Uh, sorry, in the uh, thumbnail, because it's like, oh, this is a Shad. I know Shad, right? You know? He's a friend. That's why I'll click on his video. So maybe he could reinvigorate this video by simply changing it um, with the title or the thumbnail. Uh, or maybe people just don't want to watch it anymore. That is possible too. And this isn't the only one, by the way. My second most popular video, if we look at the views of the last video, 680 views over the last month. Yeah, okay. So with this one, this one's very easy to see why it's not getting views anymore. Um, and it's kind of a little bit disingenuous, I think, by Shad. So just because this video has 4 million views, and you know, let's do a little, let's do a little, uh, little chat uh, quiz. Okay, this is a, this should be very simple. Why isn't this video getting views anymore? This seems like an interesting concept. This sword is a mess. Why is it not getting videos? Why is it not getting views? Because it's Thanos's sword. This video did well when Avengers came out. When Avengers Endgame came out, Avengers isn't being talked anymore. Nobody cares about Thanos' sword because nobody's watching the the. the the movie anymore so of course the content's not going to resonate with people that maybe saw avengers they saw that they saw his wacky sword then they go to youtube oh look there's a wacky thanos or does it work that's why this video is not getting views anymore because it was time focused content the time is now past it's going to be very difficult to reinvigorate this video's audience um so that is a very simple explanation right there and then we were simply to go back two years, that same video, 4.3 thousand views over that same period. And then if we were to go back another two years, so this is now four years ago, that same video, 35,000 views. Is that when Avengers Endgame came out four years ago? I assume, I assume that is the case. YouTube is barely recommending. So Shogun should, uh, sorry, so Shad should make a Shogun video series? Absolutely. Shogun is a great show. I love it. 
Um, I'm a big Shogun fan. I, I like this show quite a bit. Great content that's in. But yeah, ride these backlog. waves of interest. That's that a, that's a good. Their tip. own subscribers would love to see. I have all these new subscribers. Doesn't get recommended, and now they're barely getting recommended. The current videos, last two videos, like I said, apocalyptically bad. If you have a look at the amount of impressions Shadowversity has been receiving over the last year, you'll notice it's been the lowest it has been in the last year. But then if we go over to the lifetime of the channel, its impressions right down here are as low as it was in 2018 before my channel started to kind of take off. All right, right before here. So like this, this is kind of, YouTube impressions are kind of funny. So an impression means that your content was shown to somebody. Um, there used to be a formula, I'm not sure if it's still accurate, where if you got one view in a video, you would get seven impressions on the next video over a month sort of thing. So like, for example, I upload one video, I upload two videos in a month. Uh, day one of the month, like let's say March 1st, I upload a video, it gets a million views. That means that I'm going to get seven million in views over the next month. Uh, at least that's how it used to work. Take it with a grain of salt because it doesn't necessarily mean that is the case now. So if I upload a video two weeks later uh, and it's about something else, uh, that video in theory will be shown 7 million times on either the subscription feed, the homepage, or wherever else you might see a video on YouTube, for example, like the up next or recommended videos after you watch a video sort of thing. Um, it's not really how it works because it doesn't get shown to this one video. It's like across your entire audience. So like that means that my two videos I have on my channel that have been uploaded in March, they'll be fighting for those 7 million impressions. And you know the best one will usually start garnering more and more and more. It's kind of like a virtuous circle when it starts to pick up speed and momentum in video views. What this shows is that he had some very viral videos, which we know he did because he's shown us his content. And that just means he hasn't shown any, he hasn't made any viral content recently. Um, so I don't think actually showing this impressions really shows that YouTube is picking on his channel at all. Uh, it just is a reflection of the views he gained. And um, not a lot of difference, actually, from these other years. Like, there is a bit of a downturn. Like, if we're looking at this as a... It looks like the last... Like, this is March. Okay, this is this is March. This is, this is March, okay. So this means that his impressions have been low for about a week. Uh, they've been they've been a very below standard for about a week. It's actually not terrible. Um, you can fix this just by doing a good video. Um, I know that sounds like simple, but if you just make a better video, it, you can actually get out of these sort of spiral sort of things. Uh, but again, this is just a reflection of the views he was getting. Doesn't show any evidence of him being picked on. That's as they're getting this about the same amount. So if we have a look at where the average has been, about average about one million impressions a day by the look of it, and. You have to go back right. toward before 2018 to reach the same level of impressions the channel's currently getting. Is it because there is just more content on the platform? More videos means less views between them? I actually think shorts have been devastating for both YouTube and content creators like me. Now, here is something. We're going into the short talk. Now, shorts have been very successful on Shad's um, channel. And I was going to say, I said earlier that I would talk a bit about how you can convert short viewers into long form content viewers, because a lot of content creators do start off making shorts and then they make it profitable. There is something, shorts are very powerful, but they're very tricky and they're very finicky. You can't really trust them. They're like the, the sneaky genie that's going to back like a double crosser in a wish sort of thing. But when you make a short, you can basically do anything you want, except you can't make a short that replaces your video. Um, so if I go to Shad's channel again, we'll go to Shad's channel. Okay, so we go to his shorts. Uh, the first cloth armor video. Was this the first medieval cloth armor? And it's like some, it looks like, it looks like a Kevlar vest actually, like a bulletproof vest. Um, this is a short video. If this video makes it, like if there's a corresponding long, like actually we can check on this, okay. Um, okay. So he, this actually does. So he he links this short video to a long form video. So he has a 19 minute video saying we tested carbon fiber against medieval weapons and the results were invaluable. This is a very long YouTube name. I would make this shorter. But there we can see that we have a short and a long form piece of content that are both on the same topic. Now, if I watch this short and it answers the question, I have no reason to watch his long form content. So the way to convert these short views into long form viewers is that it has to not include all the information. 
uh, which is, you know, just, it has to be like a breadcrumb. You have to say like, we're going like, let's see, was this the first meeting of all? This video has to say something to the effect of, this is the first cloth armor. And then maybe you're shooting a gun or, or your a sword is running into it. And then it's like, before it goes through the armor, it has to stop and say, but you can check out the whole video sort of thing, like that sort of thing. Shorts are, again, shorts are very tricky. They have to be as short as possible while also being as long as you, you have to make them as short as you can, but as long as they need to be, uh, which again, kind of sounds obvious, but uh, that's the way it is. Uh, so if this video answers the question, then there's no reason for me to watch these other content. I can just go to another short, right? I can just go down, scrub, do it, scrub down, scrub down, and find something else. That's the tricky part with shorts. So let us continue what he says about shorts. But also, there How's are going, more waifu? users on the channel than ever before, like I've mentioned. And so it isn't like there is less views to go around. There's more people here to watch content. And I also get the feeling that uh, Mr. Beast could survive with, say, perhaps half the amount of impressions or views he gets. And some of those impressions could be given to other content this creators. This is dangerous territory um, for your own, like, well-being, like your own <laughs> sanity. If you start looking at other curators and saying like, well, Mr. Peace, Mr. Beast is sucking up all the other YouTube, my contents, I put a lot of effort into my content. You can't be, you can't be doing that. That's going to drive you nuts. You're going to start thinking that there's like the YouTube is against you and everyone, everyone just wants you to fail sort of thing. Um, you can't think like that. He does very different content from Mr. Beast. There is no, there's no overlap in the Shadowversity Mr. Beast content um so it's a very strange thing to say it. it 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 kind of reeks of jealousy um but i know i know when you get into these like bad mindsets you start to start going you kind of start spiraling right like uh, but this is this is a kind of unhealthy for a content creator to be thinking this way like well this person could do with half as many impressions as that's going to make making videos really really bad for you you're just going to start hating the process and um every time you do a bad video it's going to reinforce this idea that you're not being fairly treated and that you're being uh, you know suppressed or something so i would caution anyone who's creating videos to avoid this sort of thinking now it's nothing against mr beast okay but youtube definitely has a preference it is true though youtube does have preferences for certain channels but that doesn't mean that your content is being suppressed just because they have a preference for somebody else certain creators that it favors and boosts unfairly youtube is on record saying this by the way they're on record saying that they prioritize authoritative sources and they curate the trending page and recommendations do you remember that van life channel that uh, got millions of subscribers and views on its second video that came out and it's like that does not happen organically and so uh, it actually does um when a video when it, when somebody finds a new way to, to present content or a new topic now van life i would not say is a new or originative content uh but maybe this van life guy was the first guy that did the van life videos on youtube or whatever i'm not sure who he's talking about in particular it might be the guy with the dog i know there's like there's it's like a very like yellow warm color scheme i think i actually popped up my subscribe on my, on my feed recently um but actually that does happen organically because people start talking about it. People keep watching it. It's new. It's interesting. And it kind of explodes. But then there's always like, um, you know, copycats that come after it, right? But this absolutely does happen. And it does happen organically um, because people are enjoying the content. Now, that now there is also instances of like astroturfing on YouTube as well. Well, they're like, there'll be like a politician or something. It's a YouTube channel or um, who is that girl from... Um, Captain Marvel, that that chick, like she kind of a little bit weird, a little bit weird. She starts a YouTube channel, gets hundred thousand subscribers, didn't really do anything. Um, that's a bit, that's a bit sus. That's a bit sus, maybe. But you, you can never really prove it, right? But just because someone found like a niche that works for them doesn't mean that they were artificially boosted. Uh, I mean, what is even artificial or natural in the YouTube or any digital space? Like it's all like wires and and data and everything. Like it's the most unnatural thing possible, right? Uh, but no, it does. It does happen. People get a good topic, a good niche or a, a unique, interesting way to present content. And people just explode in watching it. There's this guy that's like, he's like a muscle, like a, a bodybuilder. And he's doing something really strange. So even in YouTube, you see like these fast, vetted, fast edited videos with like cuts and flashes and jump cuts and, and zooms and, and sound effects. There's this dude that's just doing these like day in the life videos. And he uploads like a two hour video of him just going to the supermarket no editing nothing and his channel is exploding because it's just so different from the other people in his space 
it can't really be replicated too because people are just resonating with his personality like his his personality is the draw it's really strange like just just how almost low effort those videos are and how successful they are but it does happen it does happen so with all this curation and favoritism well, that does leave far less impressions and room on the front page and people's what to watch next it leaves far less of that for creators like me uh that's not really how it works but okay um sure like on the front page on the recommended tape like not recommended sorry if i go to the let's go to oh, i'm going to expose what my youtube's recommending to me um <laughs> starcraft awesome yes that's exactly what i want to see um I'm, I'm really getting into starcraft again in a big way if you go to the trending page trending page this is what he's talking about the trending page is absolutely created it used to be like an automated feature, but then the YouTube decided to start putting like what they want on the trending page. So you see a lot of trailers, they pay to get on the trending page. Um, if you go to the home page, and this is how YouTube YouTube wants you to click on the home page to find content. They don't want you going to the subscription tabs. That's why it's underneath shorts. Like of these three first things, a subscriptions is the lowest ranked. They want you to go to home page and they want you to go to the shorts page, right? The short shelf, they call it. Um, but yeah, YouTube absolutely curates the trending page and they do get some people pay to get on there specifically big audience uh big uh studios and things like that um but that's the thing is it doesn't really matter because shad isn't fighting mr beast for the same viewers he's fighting the other people in the sword content like space or whatever his whatever his adjacent channels are associated with um this is kind of just like a a little bit like this is cope let's be honest this is this is a bit cope to say that like you know the the front page is 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 being cut off from me because only like a fraction of youtubers will ever be on the trending page even if they are chosen naturally i mean uh, sorry they are chosen by youtube staff there is like a dozen people a week that get on the trending page or whatever okay the vast there's like millions of youtube channels okay i'm never going to be on the trending page i mean maybe i will you know we could always dream we could always dream right but like so to have this thing that is just like this such a small fraction of the YouTube audience will ever be on that anyway, millions of channels are on YouTube Th and tens of thousands of channels are successful. You don't need the trending page to be to be a good channel, right? Um, that is kind of cope here from this part of the video. Because um, I'm not the only one noticing this, by the way. YouTube simply is not a fair and open platform and it absolutely suppresses recommendations and curate search results trying to push the content it wants people to watch not the content they would be most interested in. And it has distinctly gotten worse. Uh, kind of. Like, it's not the content that YouTube wants you to watch. It's the content that you will consume the longest. And when I say longest, it doesn't mean the longest video. It means longest time on the platform. YouTube wants you to be on the platform, and they want you to stay on the platform. So this is actually useful to know when you're doing your own video. If your video is linking to a different platform, you may get suppressed in search results because YouTube doesn't want you watching a three minute video on YouTube and then leaving YouTube. So if YouTube notices like, hey, this guy's doing a rumble transition, what the fuck? I don't want you to go to rumble, stay on my channel. You may get less video views because YouTube's saying, hey, people that go to your channel have a high percentage of leaving YouTube. We don't want that. So we're gonna keep you, you people that only stay on the YouTube, right? That's something you have to be very careful of because you do need to draw audience away from YouTube to either like a mailing list, a Patreon, a Discord, somewhere where you can keep those subscribers away from YouTube's greasy hands. That is true. So it's a, it's a tricky balance you have to find as a YouTuber. You can't do it too much, but you can't not do it at all. Beginning of January, where things just fell off a cliff. It's like someone decided to put Shadowversity under a boot and this is the type of thing that will kill the channel. This is and a bit dangerous to think about. Is that even like, again, this like, let's be real here. Shadow banning is a real thing, but 99% of times when people, when a YouTube creator says they're being shadow banned, 99% of the time it's cope. And I've, I've said that I've been shadow banned before as well. The reality is the video wasn't good or it was a topic that was old or there was somebody else that did the same topic and they did it better than me. It's very easy for a YouTuber to start coping and then start saying like, well, I was shadow banned. Of course, they're suppressing my content. Of course, it's suppressing my content. Why would YouTube suppress sword content? 
like Shadow Versity's channel is not political. It's 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 like it's YouTube content. Like there's not like it's it's actually probably the most family friendly family friendly content on the on the entire channel, right? On the entire entire internet. This is like what happens if we hit a sword into armor? It breaks. Wow. Like that's not that's not critical of the content. By the way, I said I like the content. I do. But there's no reason to shadow ban Shadowversity, at least from my, from what I can see. Now, he is more political on his other channels, but ironically, those channels are doing better. So how does that make sense? If you're doing content that's like medical information, you know what I'm talking about, like back when the coof was around and people were like, well, what if you take this instead? That was getting shadow banned. Yep. Uh, political stuff does get shadow banned quite a bit. Yes, it does get suppressed in the algorithm. There's a certain topics that you say and you will activate this secret little uh, suppression thing. Okay, that does happen. Um, and especially if your video is demonetized or um, otherwise not family friendly, yes, you will be suppressed. I cannot see the Dragon's Dogma 2 tested weapons thing being shadow banned. Realistically, people maybe just aren't interested in it. And, and that's that's kind of funny to say because 36,000 people watch this video, which isn't a small amount of money. You know, it's not, I mean, it shouldn't be. But uh, I can even, show, uh, hold on. I'll just, I'll like, I like to demonstrate everything that I say um, as much, as much as I can. So um, I actually have a very good example that I would like to show you if you give me a moment. All right. This is a great example of the engagement. Let me see, which is the best tab that really shows you? The reach tab. There we go. All right. So last week I made a video. Again, this is the video on um, commies versus anime. Okay. So this video did something very strange for me. Okay. You see here, no views. I only like I have about what is it, thirteen thousand subscribers. And in the first day, the first like let's say the first five hours, less than a hundred people watch this video, which is very strange for my channel. You know, usually I get like a about, like maybe a thousand or five hundred. Um, views in the first hour or so. That's pretty typical for me. This video was being suppressed and then it went up to 15,000 uh, 15, impressions. And then it's like slowly kind of growing. You know, it's like doing it's doing fine now. But what caused this weird bump? What caused, what caused the bump in views was this video was green on the monetization when I uploaded it to my channel. I waited a little while. It was still green. I thought we we're good to go. Release the video. It got turned into a yellow tick. Yellow tick means it's been limited ads. I appealed the limited ads. The li after 24 hours, the limited ads was, um, they decided they made a mistake. They approved it for the green tick. And then look at this. I got the green tick, extra 15,000 impressions. And now it kind of is tapering off, okay? So if your YouTube video is not advertiser friendly, then that absolutely gets suppressed, okay? That's what happened here. Now, what caused this part here? We can see that it's, uh, I was getting, getting lots of views, lots of views, lots of views, and it tapered off. What had happened here? Did the view? Did YouTube turn off the view faucet? No. What happened is that probably somebody else that did the similar video had a better video than mine, and YouTube decided that well, this other person's video is in the same topic, and they're getting better engagement rates, so we're going to send more view people to that one instead. And then, like, you know, it just sort of naturally happens in a lot of videos' life cycles that they kind of taper off like this, um, or it it reached the zenith of what YouTube thought would people would watch it. Like, right? so like it shows it shows your your, your video to an audience get a bunch of views, start showing it to a wider audience. Those videos didn't resonate as well. So it went back to that same niche. That's why you can see it like slowly going, like the, it was going up sharply here and then it gets slower. That means it was being exposed to a wider audience and that wider audience did not resonate with the content. So YouTube's like, okay, we'll start showing it to those original people again, the same people that are in here. That's what happened here. And then YouTube decided that that's about as many people that'll probably watch this. And then other content was recommended next to it. And the more that people click the other content, the less mine was shown. That's how it works. Um, but it's not, it's not that my video was shadow banned. It's just that it wasn't monetized friendly until it got to this point. Uh, but again, that doesn't really apply to Shad's channel because I would imagine that every single one of these videos is uh, approved for monetization. And the more that I'm looking at his channel, the more I'm seeing a trend. And that trend is that the videos he has that have the best, which provide the best growth, are the ones that are pop culture adjacent. So like his best video is the sword drawing content, which is probably just very interesting, like learning how to draw a sword, right? But then you've got like the Marvel stuff, and then we look at his recent stuff. Um, so June, 120,000 views. 
Demon Slayer, 100,000 views. Batman, 95,000 views. What I'm seeing here is that he's positioned his channel into such a way that if he's doing something about a movie, if he's doing something about a TV show, he's going to get views. And if he does something more straight content, which is like, uh, our Katana's the hot, the hot girl of swords, it's not going to resonate with that video there because he's put himself into the pop culture adjacent space. So the answer here is he needs to make more pop culture videos. If he doesn't like doing pop culture videos, then he's going to have to keep making more Katana's is the hot girl of all swords until it finds a new audience. Uh, but at the moment, his audience is based on the pop culture, movies, animes. He has to make content in that niche to get more views. Um, it really, I think it's as simple as that. How apocalyptic the um, ad revenue has been and views and all that stuff on Shadowversity at the moment. It's still going to going to increase to one point two five speed. So anyone that's watching on on replay, um, shares are going to start talking really fast because if you're watching my video on one point two or one point five speed, then it's about to get real fast. Prizes the majority of my business's revenue. Okay, and to try and keep people employed, if I were to leave this platform, it would kill the business and I can't risk promoting people to watch the content off of YouTube even though we actually do put it on multiple other platforms right because we still need the views on YouTube because as bad as ad revenue is we're still reliant on it what I can say though um so Shad said that his majority comes he didn't did he say that earlier in the video I'm pretty sure he did that he said that the majority of his income is coming from ad revenue and I was saying that you have to make it less than 50% and ideally it'd be less than like 20%. So when we were calculating his income before, we, we said like five around 5,000 for views, right? Uh, I'm going to have a quick look at his Patreon. So he's got a subscribe star and a Patreon. Uh, all right, subscribe scars got like a couple hundred people. That's probably a couple thousand a month. It's 411 subscribe star people. And then he's got 2,800 members on his... Oh, well, this is interesting. There's actually quite a lot of people on Patreon. Now, on Patreon, usually when you click on someone's channel, it shows you the most popular tier, but it doesn't on his. It doesn't show us how much he's earning, but we know it's a minimum. It's a minimum of $2,800 a month. Typically, the $5 tier would be the average one, but the thing I'm seeing with his content is there's no different tier accesses. This is a mistake on Shad's part, in my opinion. Um, what I'm seeing here is that there's no incentive to be a $5 tier member. Like if you put like, like what you have to do on Patreon is like the $1 a month tier is like my love and thanks is your award. Then like the $5 tier is like the discord access or like the behind the scenes content. Um, you have to incentivize people to the higher tiers. Otherwise they'll just go to the lowest tier, um, because people want to save money. Um, even if they're supporting you. So I'm going to set like, usually this would be like the $5 tier would be the most common subscribe one, but it's kind of tricky on this one to actually determine how much he's making on Patreon. I would say it's somewhere between the one and the five. I'm going to average that out to, so we say 5,000 from YouTube. Um, looks like he got about, I would say 2,000 from 2,000 from Subscribestar. These are pretty, we're just spitballing here, right? Um, how much are we going to say for Patreon? If it was the $5 tier, that would be great because that'd be like an extra $10,000. But I don't think it's that much. Again, I can never know. And he's hidden, like you, you actually choose to hide this information, which is a great idea. I don't begrudge him for hiding that information. I wish I could see it, but that's the correct move to make. Um, but I'm going to say it's it's like, I'm going to average it out to be like $3. So I'm going to say this is an additional $6,000 a month from Patreon. So on average, we can probably assume that Shad is earning $13,000 a month and he has at least three employees. So divided by three, that's $4,000 a month. That's not a lot, really. Especially in Australia, it's expensive in Australia. Um, that's not that's not great. Um, and the thing with like, I might say something a bit controversial here, but if you're working in YouTube, you have to be earning more than your equivalent regular job, right? Um, so if you're a business administrator or something, and you're earning five thousand dollars a month in business admin, you need to be earning like seven thousand or ten thousand dollars in YouTube. The reason I say this is because when you're on YouTube, you you don't have a healthcare plan; you have to pay for it yourself. You don't have superannuation or 401k. You have to pay for it yourself. And you're also losing out your experience in doing like, YouTube's like a fun job, right? So in theory, you could do it for cheaper. You'd be like, well, this is a fun job. I'll take half. I'll, I'll, I would I would take half my salary working on YouTube because I can have all the free time in the world. But that's not actually how it works. Um, if you're working on YouTube, you need to be making more than you would be doing otherwise because you're losing your opportunity costs and you're losing your skills. Um, this happens in a lot of jobs, by the way. But I'm just going to talk about YouTube. Is this YouTube focused, right? 
like if, if Shed's channel dies tomorrow, those two guys that work on his channel, what business experience do they have working on a YouTube channel? Now, what, I believe they're both like professional sword men or something like, you know, like, um, I, I mean, I know one of them does like movie sword stunts and things like that, right? So I guess you could use the YouTube sword fighting as um, experience. But the other guy, I don't know what he does. If it is that he's like, he went he went to university and like he was studying, I don't know, computer science, and you've spent three years off computer science to work on YouTube, your contemporaries are going to be much more attractive, uh, attractive to in potential employers. So you need that extra money as a hedge against, you know, the, the worst happening. Um, and Internet Guy says, here's another $2. Thank you much, very much. Thank you. He's another two dollars, but I'm pretty sure he smells. Um, I think he probably smells like a regular Australian. Okay, and you can take that how you will. Like if we were able to grow uh, the community support through channel memberships, Patreon, Subscribe Star, or uh, Player, right, to the point where we can be sustainable from viewership support and therefore not reliant on ad revenue, I can guarantee our content will not only be on all. Like you, you shouldn't. You should never rely on ad revenue as a YouTuber. It has to be Patreon. It has to be selling a digital product or, or it doesn't have to be a digital product. I mean, that's just a digital products are great because you don't have any inventory. Um, it has to be selling a product. It has to be Patreon or it has to be sponsorships. And this is Shad's responsibility. Like he's responsible for these employees that he's hired and he's responsible for bringing money into his channel. He should not be relying on YouTube ad revenue by itself. That is a big mistake um, and a very precarious place to be. Obviously, you have to diversify. And one thing that I'm noticing is that I'm going to click on his last four videos. Um, and when you get a sponsored video, you're supposed to click, uh, click that in the, the box and it should show up here. It says add sponsored here. So let's see the first, the swords versus katanas video. Oh, sorry, the katana hot girl video. No sponsor. Uh, this one, no sponsor. Uh, no sponsor. Uh, no sponsor. It's like it is Shad's responsibility as the captain of the ship to find those sponsorships or to bring money into the Patreon. Um, so I believe that he is lacking in this this area. And I don't actually like seeing sponsorships and I don't like having sponsorships in my own video. I love the money, but I do think it, it detracts from the content. Now, I think a lot of users are the same way, right? Like they don't like content that has all these big spot, like his one minute ad reads or anything. And I know that he does take them occasionally, but I've seen like a, the, the, the ready-made meal ones in his video before. He needs to be taking more sponsorships. If money is a problem, he needs to be taking more sponsorships or convincing his audience to pay more on Patreon, which he could be doing in this video. Like this video could be a bit of a plea for help, right? But you got to put food in the bills. Like you got, I mean, you got to put food on the table. You got to put food on the table. And if that means, like, if your artistic integrity will prevent you from taking sponsorships, that's very noble of you. But then you can't exactly complain when you can't pay the bills. There has to be a, you have to find an equilibrium. Um, Jess Moxie Dame says, you're my favorite hot katana girl. Thank you very much. You know what's really annoying about living in Japan is you can't actually buy swords. You are not allowed to own katanas in Japan unless you have basically a katana license. You actually need your license and a reason to own a katana. Like if you're practicing, if you if you start learning like the way of the blade, you're allowed to have a blade. But I can't just have a katana in my house, which is very sad for me because I live in Japan. When I lived in New Zealand, I unironically did have a katana and I would like slice through the Coke bottles and, and watermelons and stuff. It was great fun. And I got it for like, it was a really good, high quality blade, but I got it on like a $1 reserve thing. Like I waited till 3am in the morning and no one was bidding. Then I got, I snacked it up for a dollar. I was so happy with that purchase. And when I came to Japan, I had to leave my sword behind. Very sad for me, but I appreciate the $20 it is. Thank you very much. A lot of platforms, like every video, I would be encouraging people to watch it on those platforms because I wouldn't need the views for the ad revenue. And YouTube seems to want to kill this channel and drive away certain content creators. It doesn't seem like that, you know, and wants us here. And it seems like they try and do it gradually and subtly, suppressing certain niches, certain types of content to squeeze out uh, these uh, types of creators or genres of content. But more recently, they've done it very much more starkly. So even though we're still reliant on ad revenue with how bad it's been these last uh, few No, I did not. I did not vow to take up the sword again. I am thinking of ways to get swords back into my life, unironically. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about joining a sword club so I can own a sword legally. I would love, I'd very much like to have a katana. 
but that means that I have to actually study for the way I actually start have to become the way of the blade before I'm allowed to own a sword again. Um, because I was unironically because I saw the video where he was talking about how katanas are made in Japan. I thought well, that'd be really fun to have them again. Months. I'll have a sword we, again one day. Uh, might not be able to continue making content the way we have been. We've only been losing money each month. Uh, my wife and I have literally gone for multiple months without paying ourselves. November and December, uh, we didn't pay ourselves a cent and we survived, lived off of uh, the money we got from our tax returns. And I did that to try and keep people employed, um, paying wages. And even after doing that, I've needed to draw money out of the graphic novel profits um, and put it back in. Yeah, so Shad, Shad also made like this book behind you. You can see the um, Shadow of the Conqueror. This is Shad's book. So he, he's an author as well. Um, you can see them. He does, I guess, a graphic novel and also uh, I think it's like a hardcover book. I'm not sure. I haven't read it. I don't know if it's good or not. Um, I know some people are very critical of his book, but a lot of people are critical of him as a person as well. That may be that they're not giving the, a good book review, right? Um, not Kendo. Uh, to own it, like if you, if you join Kendo, like Kendo is the way of the blade. Like Ken means sword. So, and Do is like path. So sword path, Kendo. That's why judo, wait, no, wait, yeah, judo is like, I don't know, I can't remember what ju means. I mean, in Japanese, the J, J, U, U, what is, wait, hold on a sec. Judo means like wave the hand or something. Hold on, ju, judo. Hold on, let me see. I should know that. Why don't I know this? <laughs> Why don't I know what judo actually means? Gentle way, gentle way. Okay, so judo means gentle way. The do is like the path, gentle path. Okay, um, there you go, there you go. And kudo is like the way of the bow right like but if you do kendo you own like a wooden sword a boken or a shinai um or boken boken i'm not sure i think it's boken um i was going to use karate as an example but that's different karate means like empty hand like kata is like empty and hand te kata te empty hand um there you go but um with judo you win i suppose uh, but no, no, uh, there's a different way of the blade you need to learn to own a katana. Yeah, it has to be like um, actual katana, proper use of a katana. Like when you see the Japanese people slicing through the tatami mat sort of thing, you have to be in a club that does that basically to own a sword. Just to keep paying wages, which is going to restrict or cast doubt on me being able to make um, additional graphic novel projects. Shadow of the Conquer Volume 2 is insured. Money's already secured for that. But I was hoping to have some left over to do another graphic novel, and I don't know. About so with how desperate things have been financially. I, I genuinely hope that everyone can understand how unbelievably grateful I am for all the supporters that we have at the moment. And if it wasn't for yeah, you- Yeah, so like, I he, I do believe this. Like, I, I don't, I, I do believe he's being accurate and earnest here. So we, we look, we averaged his earning on just his YouTube channel, Patreon and subscribe star to about $14,000. I think he's probably got more than three employees though. He has at least three. So he's got the the sword, they got the, what is the guy's name? The two guys' names? They say it in this video, don't they? Uh, hold on. So he's got, wait, no, was it not this video? No, I guess not. Well, he's got at least two. I assume there's maybe an editor and maybe someone behind the scenes. So if he's got $14,000, um, and he's dividing it over four people, we'll say it's four people minimum, then that's less than 3,500 a month. Um, that doesn't go very far. That's like, that's like almost like entry level work. And I guess in Australia, depends where you live. Like Australia is an expensive place to live. Uh, go back here. So I can see him having money. Like, I, I definitely believe he is having money problems. This is, again, this is the problem when you start adding these other people to your YouTube channels. But maybe as the captain, sometimes you have to make the hard decisions. And maybe he's paying them a lot. Maybe he's paying them a percentage. But maybe he has to talk to them and say, like, hey, guys, the channel's not doing as well. We're going to have to change. We, we're either going to have to pay you less or you can take maybe a percentage of all earnings. I would assume that he's paying them, like, a regular wage, like a set amount for every month, because obviously you want to be able to live on a on a predictable amount that every every month it's going to be the same. So usually you pay your employees like a set amount. Maybe he needs to offer them a deal like, hey, we can't afford to have that big payment anymore. Maybe you can have a percentage. If we do worse, we do worse. If we do more, you get more. That's the risk. That's the reward. Um, but again, as the leader, as the channel creator, it's his responsibility to either have that hard talk with them or find alternative ways to monetize the channel, whether it be improving his monetization, like we talked about earlier in the episode and in the show, um, whether it's by taking more sponsorships, whether it's by, you know, saying every day, hey, subscribe to the behind the scenes Patreon sort of thing and, you know, offer different things for different tiers. A lot of careers do that, uh, but it's his responsibility. We would be done 
Like, Doesn't he own the 10 acre woods? He's got a big property. Is, like, he, he gets a lot of, he loves a lot of area. I'm not sure about that. I would have been forced to have to uh, contract. I'd have to let people go and kind of reel it back into a one man show. The problem about that is my health. Uh, the reason why I brought on additional people is that it was becoming too difficult for me to produce the content on my own. If you weren't aware, I am disabled. I have chronic fatigue. Really? Uh, it's officially called myalgic encephalomyelitis or this is the first i've heard about this and i've been pushing myself harder than I've i'll i'll take him at his word for that um i never i don't consider a man that can swing a sword to be disabled like it's a little bit strange because i've seen him cut i've seen him like he's wearing full suits of armor and he's cutting I'm, i'll take him at his word um this seems a little bit strange to me like when i when i hear disabled i'm like do you need like special parking sort of thing but that's because i'm an able-bodied person um I'll I will I will take him at his word though that he is disabled, although he doesn't typically seem like a disabled person to me. Um I guess I mean I can I can see fatigue being a, a big a killer of motivation. Absolutely. He's had it for several years now. I mean people that are disabled typically are disabled forever. So that makes sense. Um, but this is the first I've ever heard. I would I never would have suspected it. Like if he is struggling with this, he's doing a pretty good job. Um it is a weird one. I've never heard of that one before. I've ever pushed myself before to try and raise the quality, bring the content up, even in spite of how crippled I am behind the scenes, just to try and keep this thing afloat. And I, can't I mean, that is, that is true, though, that like a, a lot of the times you like there's stuff going on in the YouTubers like backgrounds, like family shit or health shit or, you know, just having other responsibilities uh, that you just don't know about. Right. So I could say I could see that. Like uh, sometimes I'm having like a really bad week. I don't show it on stream, sort of thing. That's what you shouldn't. You shouldn't bring. You, I don't think you should bring your trauma to your audience because typically people watch YouTube videos as an escape. Although it's understandable in this video because he's talking about the challenges of his channel, and uh, I, I guess that goes to show you actually how much he, how well he's hidden it because I've never heard about this until now. How unbelievably discouraging it is when you work so hard and you sacrifice a lot to try and keep things going. And then something outside of your control just crushes it. So to be fully sustainable off of like fan support, we would need to basically yeah, triple our numbers from the uh, current supporters we collectively have. If he triples his off oh, his current supporters, not just the views. So then, hold on a second. So we think five thousand dollars. I said fourteen thousand dollars. So he needs thirty thousand dollars a month. That'd be thirty. Actually, that'd be that'd be thirty-five, wouldn't it? Because thirty-five plus the ad revenue uh, divided over, let's say, four people, eight thousand dollars. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Yeah, I can I can see that being three times. Yeah, that seems like it seems like all the numbers are accurate so far. We've done across all platforms. So that's memberships, Patreon, player, and the subscribe star. And by the way, subscribe star is the best out of them. It gives the big, best return to creators. But that also means literally a whole third of the business income is coming from supporters at the moment. That's how much of an incredible like like that's support like you. Wait, hold on a second. Guys are a whole third, third of our revenue from you guys. Thank you. A third and of his revenue. So then 60% is coming from YouTube entirely? Well, that would make it different. If, if I mean, the the Patreon's the hardest one to calculate because he doesn't show the numbers, but we estimated it to being around, what did we say? Like $3,000? $3, or did I say $6,000? No, I think I said, I think I said, I think I said $6,000, right? If he's making five thousand from you, it, it was between two thousand eight hundred and ten thousand. So that would suggest that he's only bringing in three thousand from Patreon. That seems low. Like again, like that actually kind of makes sense because of the way like he hasn't got any of the different content available for different tiers. Like every tier is the same. Like even if you just have a joke here, you should have like like one dollar a month. My my thanks. Five dollars a month. My love. Uh, ten dollars a month, my feet picks or something. Like it has, there has to be something, even if it's just a joke, to incentivize people to click more than one dollar. That actually would suggest that ninety percent of his Patreon supporters are on the one dollar tier, which is actually very surprising, um, because there are channels that make that this work. And uh, one of the examples is the anim animation industry. So, animation on YouTube used to be wildly profitable. And Flash Gets, I'm going to use as an example of this because I like Flash Gets. They're very funny. Um, but the animation used to bring in a lot of money back when YouTube was working on a per click uh, for payment. YouTube changed from per click to watch time average. And most animation is like three minutes or four minutes, right? Um, or $1 or something. 
Um, so overnight, a lot of animation channels died. And I think Shad actually brings this up later in the video. But what I've noticed is that a lot of animation channels are finding alternative ways to monetize their, their uh, content. And like Flash Kits is an example. They're using Patreon. They have got 29,000 subscribers on Patreon. And look at this, most popular tier, the $5 tier. So then we can kind of, we can kind of average this to being 29,000 times five. That's a lot of cash. That's a lot of cash. They've got a two dollar tier too. But look at there's additional benefits here: Discord access, chance to win stickers, and actually I've seen a lot of animation channels do this. Is that they sell a monthly sticker so that you have to stay subscribed, so that you're getting something physical in return. Um, maybe Shad should do something like that, like you know, upload like sword lessons to his Patreon for the five dollar tier, and then the one dollar tier is like, well, my thank you, you know, thank you for subscribing because every dollar does count. But if you have these incentives to these other tiers. Uh, then you can make a lot of money. Like Flash Kits is making over a hundred thousand a month on Patreon, and th I think they don't make very much on YouTube though, because um, <laughs> because their content is wildly demonetized. And yes, yeah, Space King. I, I really enjoyed Space King. Actually, it was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, so that's what you have to do. You can make like these channels that get like low ad revenue can work, but you have to take the responsibility to make that content on either other platforms or take those sponsorships to make it profitable, especially if you want to keep those other guys employed. We've been taking uh, measures going the extra mile to give back content for you. He almost content. never advertises his Patreon or subscribes during his videos. This means a lot of people might not even know. Kind of a rookie mistake. Uh, he may have to have a, you have to have a call to action. Yes, absolutely. Um, so one of the examples, uh, I'm just going to go to the end of his video. Like he does describe it, like it is here. I think this video is not indicative of his regular content, though, because this is four days ago. So this is already in the problem, the problem zone, you know. Uh, when I go to the end of the video, I want to see something. This is actually kind of crazy. Like, he doesn't use end cards. So when you make a YouTube video, you can put an end card. Like, you know, it has the little bubble pops up with the subscribe. And then it's like the next video watch here. This is a very key thing to do on the end of a video because you want to direct um, people to the next piece of content. Like, you'll see this in a lot of successful YouTubers. They'll say something like, hey, this is my goat cheese recipe. But you know what goes great with goat cheese? Sausages. And if you want to see how I make the sausage, click on this video. It's like a kind of a natural lead into the next video. That's very good for keeping YouTubers, uh, people on your channel, and especially new subscribers onto your channel. Uh, like he's, he said, he literally said that he's getting lots of new subscribers, but they're not watching his older content. He has to be the one that's promoting his older content in the newer videos. Like I'm not even seeing like a, a card. Maybe this video, I'm going to go to another, maybe this video just didn't happen. Uh, let's go to a let's go to another video and see if he did it because this is a this is a very this is a big mistake. Like he should have someone like I'm not seeing a card. There's no card in the top left. Even though like me, even if there's only one percent increase in views, if you've got 800 videos and they're all increasing your productivity by like two percent, that's a lot of videos. That's a lot of views. He does have it here. Okay, he has it here. He has it here. Um, you can actually replace this subscribe thing here with a Patreon thing. Um, so one of the channels I was talking about earlier, uh, abroad in Japan, abroad in Japan, he's a really good example of this. So he's got about uh, 3 million subscribers. If you go to his channel, so on his, on his thing, it says subscribe on Patreon. Uh, and if you go to the end of his content, we'll have to watch this four seconds ad. Uh, there we go. All right. If you go to the end here, wait, is he not, not going to do it? Is it not in this video? Maybe it's not in the, all right. Oh, did this change? He must have changed this. This used to link directly to his Patreon. Like this guy used to never have his subscribe thing here. It used to be just go subscribe to me on Patreon. And as a result, he's got quite a bit of Patreon supporters. Uh, wait, is he not linking his Patreon anymore? Oh no, it's right here. Yeah, 10,000 people at $5 a month, like $50,000 a month, basically. Um, that's what you gotta do. Shad has he, Shad needs to promote his Patreon or provide a different product if he wants to survive on YouTube with the changing landscape. Uh, are you familiar with Janovich? I don't think so. I'll have to check that out later. But yeah, for those who support us, the thing is though, right, more, it's, if uh, I've been busy, if anyone will be in more in the future. Help, I don't expect everyone will be, and I'm so grateful for anyone who's able to help out in, in any way possible. Okay, liking and sharing is, is, is tremendous as well. Okay, 
And uh, even if like only like 10% of people who watch this video were able to contribute even $1 a month, that's $12 a year, you would get access to the fun exclusive content that, that we actually have a heap of fun making, but that would also make us completely sustainable and we will be absolutely free from relying on YouTube. You know, you might not think $1 is much, it's a drop in a bucket, but there's still a very strong community here, a huge fan base that loves the content. I will say though, like I have problems asking for help. I'm not sure if this is an Australian thing. I think it is though. But like, it's almost like I never want to ask people for help. I want to do everything by myself. I wonder if Shad's the same way. Like maybe he finds it like cringe or uncomfortable to say, hey, go subscribe to me on Patreon. So maybe he has it, but he's never really promoting it. And maybe that's the reason. Maybe it's just like a cultural thing. Americans don't really have a problem with this. I've noticed like Americans will be like, yeah, guys, you are the best content. You got to come to my Patreon. Come on now. But I don't see a lot of Australians doing that. I think it is just a cultural thing. Like if, maybe it's like an English thing as well. I'm not sure. It kind of feels like it feels very weird for me to like, I can't, I can't do like the grift streams unless I'm, I'm like the only time we've ever done like a grift stream was when we were trying to fundraise for the cringe van adventure, right? Like that was like, you know, a promise of something that we're going to make. I find it very difficult to ask for super chats and things like that, but I don't, I don't see the same for other channels. Like they, they're like, they're like, no, no, you just, you just ask for it. It's like, no problem. Like people want to give you money. All you have to do is ask for it. I'm like, oh, if they want to give money, they'll do it. I don't need to ask. I don't need to ask them. But honestly, you kind of do need a call to action. People don't just do it by themselves typically. Um, but I wonder if that is an Australian thing. Uh, apparently it's a man thing. I don't know if it's a man, like maybe that's part of it, but I don't think, I don't see this. Like Americans are very good at self-promotion and networking. Like they're very outgoing and like um, they, they don't really feel, I don't think they feel the same shame that maybe we do like as, as Commonwealth people. I don't know, maybe I'm completely wrong. This is just complete, complete like theory craft on my part. But like, if I go to like a party or something and like I see like someone in my, in my, my niche that could maybe like, you know, I could do a collaborator with or something and maybe get a lot of views that way. I can't go up to them and say like, hey man, if we collaborate, we'll make a lot of money together. I'll be like, I'll be like, nah, if he wants, if he likes my content, he'll come to me. He'll come to me, don't worry, he'll come to me. But every, but if it's like an American, I always see them going up like, like, dude, let's just, I, like, I need my break. You can help me out, right? I'm like, and I, and I love helping people. That's the funny thing. When people come up and ask me for help, I love giving help, but I can't, I can't ask for it. I wonder if he's the same way, but who knows, who knows. And if you did want to help us out, that might be one of the only That's true. Australians are very good at Simpsons, we'll Simpsons references. One dollar when put together with everyone else can do a lot more than you might think. And being free from YouTube, of course, then I would be happy for people to watch our content off of YouTube, to not be reliant on it. Again, just to be free from it because there needs to be a viable, you know, competitor alternative. And I would even start making exclusive content for the other platforms and even more for our members. Very true. A lot like of non-members in chat join the channel. Uh, helps. It's in the video description. Two thirds of the revenue is the Although, revenue. to be fair, like, even though I say that, like, I'm not very good, like this stream, a lot of people have been very supportive. So thank you very much. I appreciate every, every uh, little bit. And we need that. But even that is probably not going to be enough. That that's just been getting worse. You see this death spiral. You see the current the performance of the current, you know, the most recent videos, and you see this uh, drop of cliff. And again, you only see that the result of getting no yeah, new subscribers, American right? Impression. Even with videos that did really, really well, is the result of those videos not getting shown to new viewers. Okay? So videos can do very well, but then not have a very high return subscribe rate if the video is like solving a problem or is answering a question that they have. So I have a lot of content like this in particular, where I have a guide for a certain city in Japan. Uh, if someone's going to Hiroshima, they search for how, you know, what to do in Hiroshima, my video comes up, they watch the video, they're not gonna subscribe. That, that sort of video doesn't garner a lot of subscribers because they've, they've, they've been served what they want. They don't need the information anymore. It's like, it's like when you search for how to fix a toilet, you don't subscribe to the how to fix a toilet channel because once you've fixed your toilet, you have no need of that content, right? So I wonder that may be just a, you know, an artifact of being a sword YouTuber. Maybe someone's like, oh, you know, what would a sword, would a, would a katana, would a katana beat a claymore? Like, and then they see the video, their question's been answered, but maybe they're just not interested in seeing, you know, if a claymore can beat, uh, I don't know, a nunchucks or something, right? Maybe that is the reason there. So sometimes you do get, especially in viral videos, like viral videos have a very low subscribe rate. Not all the time, but in my experience, because they are these small pieces of information or something that someone doesn't want to see every day, but is kind of resonates with them in a moment. Um, 
that could be the answer there. Okay. And even the recommendations to our subscribers have dropped dramatically. The lowest impressions I've ever had on the channel for five years. And remember, like five years ago, I wonder how big the channel was, probably around 100,000 mark or something like that, um, or at least a couple hundred thousand. But even back then, more recommendation. Yeah, so things aren't going great on Shadowversity. And by the way, like, I'm going to find a way to make content all the ways I love making I'm going to ask the chat a question. Do you think this is a good idea to make a video like this? So what are the pot like? Should, should you share this with your viewers? Yes or no? And remember to like the stream, by the way. Results slash likes stream. Um, these sort of videos, like this is kind of like this video is kind of like a cry, like it's a cry for help, basically. Like it's like it's a frustration and it's a cry for help. Some people, when they see this sort of content, they will attribute share what? Share that you're in trouble. Is it a good idea to share that you're in trouble? Um, because this is, this is a very, like, this is kind of a sad video, right? Like if, if you watch this video, you come away with bad feelings. Are you more likely to support Shad now? I would say that like the majority of people are probably not like this video, this video is telling me that he needs to, he need like this video is, could be, it's like a 40 minute video. It's basically summed up as he needs more people to subscribe to his Patreon so far, or he needs to add more sponsorships. But this sort of like, it's almost like a pity party. I don't know it's a good idea to do this sort of content. I understand why you would upload it though. Like I, I would not do this. Like, I don't think you'll ever see a video of me saying, guys, I'm, I'm, in I, I'm, I'm in bad situation right now because I don't want people to know that I'm vulnerable, right? Like there have been times in my life where I have been vulnerable, but I don't want that on the internet. I don't want to share that. Um, not everyone's the same though. Uh, like maybe he has built up like a, I don't, I don't know what Shad's relationship with his audience is like. Maybe he's got like a very tight knit community. Maybe he shares a lot of personal details on his Patreon or something, but it, it really like, there's a lot of people that'll see this and they'll be like, well, he's just a self-entitled YouTuber who's, who can't support his dream castle building aspirations and, and hiring three people. Like I'm working my job at nine to five at Mr. Steinbrenner's office. And he's like, I'm getting paid half what he's been. like, you know, the, this sort of video, it's like, it's almost like blood in the water for a lot of people. So I feel like it's a bad idea to make this video, but maybe he feels like he's got nowhere else to turn to. Uh, I can definitely empathize with this situation. I can definitely understand why he'd do it, but I don't think it's a good move. Um, I'm the kind of person that I think it's, you should never show your vulnerable side because it, it's probably only ever going to be an avenue of attack, right? Uh, maybe that, maybe that's a bit like, maybe I'm just not trusting enough, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, but especially since YouTube is <laughs> Schadenfreude. No, I like, I like Shad. That's the thing. I like his content, but like this sort of content, I, I see it as like a bad move, like a bad strategic move. Uh, so Hmm. It's a tricky situation. It looks like the audience thinks mostly no, you should not share this sort of content. Some people obviously obviously some people do like it. Like the there is a I, I definitely think it is a minority, at least the poll is showing that it to be the case. There is a there's a minority that likes to see this because it shows them how human and like they have fears and doubts and insecurities. Like it because everyone does. Everyone does. Um so some people do like that. But a lot of people don't want to go on YouTube and feel sad. That's the that's like the harsh reality, is that like I don't turn on YouTube and like, oh, you know what? I would love to feel sad right now. I know I want to see something funny. I want to see something insightful. Or I want to see something entertaining or something, right? Or I want to forget about my life. I don't want to be reminded about my bills that I have to pay because this guy has to pay bills sort of thing. So yeah, this might be a bad, like this might be a delete video. The funny, because this is like, this is like the boogie posting, you know, like boogie, he'll get into these things like, um, where he posts like a video about how sad he is and it gets like a hundred thousand views. And he does like, I'm going to do videos of me doing my magic cards, 10,000 views. Then the next video, guys, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. And then like, but then the next sad video is like 90,000 views. And then the next sad video is 70,000 views because you can get a lot of attention. You can get a lot of money from being sad or for saying, help me, please. But I mean, I mean, I can't afford to eat. Right. I can't afford to the roof of my house, but that has a very low return rate. The best return rate is always making people happy or making them feel content or, or something, right? Um, entertaining, make them laugh, make them, make them smile. They'll keep coming back and they'll keep happily paying you money, make them sad. You can get a payout, but the return on the payout's not going to be as good. 
content. And uh, Night's Watch is a lot of fun, and it's uh, been growing. Okay. Yeah, that's what I said. Desperate is, is um, means, blood in the water. But it has been growing, and uh, make, it's been really enjoying that. And so, of course, I'll still be making. So he said that Night's Watch is growing. So he's got multiple channels. Night's Watch, I believe it's like. First of all, I think it's a very funny channel name because it's like him and his friend wearing like a knight armor typically or like but sometimes not all the time and they it's kind of like their reaction channel so it's like it's like what we'll describe as like the low effort content again there's nothing wrong with it being low effort but like obviously sitting down talking about is bbc purging gamers um is that is a lot easier to make than like three guys wearing you know f sh slicing swords and stuff like this is this is very difficult to make like this sort of content here very easy to do reaction videos which is why i'm doing this video right now um it seems like this channel's growing and it actually it seems like comparative views like i would say that night's watch is doing 50 percent as well as shadowversity but it's like 20 times easier to make a night's watch video and the the funny thing about saying that his night watch channel is is doing well is it kind of proves that he's not being suppressed because he is successful like it's just that the content that he wants to make is maybe not what's being successful on youtube right now night watch still be making shadowversity for as long as i can depending on the resources and who i'm able to pay basically no subscribers means no new viewers no new viewers means nope. uh that's just not true um you don't need subscribers to get views Otherwise, how would a channel grow in the first place? Subscribers are a impression left by views. You would think, you would think that more subscribers mean more views. No, not really, not anymore. Not on, not on the today's landscape of, um, of viewers. If you have a lot of views, you'll have a lot of subscribers, not the other way around. So no new subscribers does not mean no new views. And we know this is like, we can actually see, like we actually can prove this is true right now because you can see here his timeline, this is zero. So on March 16th, he had zero subscriber growth. But if we look at his actual channel, you can see, uh, view channel stats. Let's see if we can find, what did I say, March? March, uh, wait, let, let's, uh, let's actually get, look. March, we'll say March 16th, March 16th. Uh, let me see if I can find that on the timeline. Uh, it looks like he got 70,000 views on that day. So it is strange to get 70,000 views and hit no new subscribers. That is weird. That's a weird one. But no, it's, it's like, it's provably incorrect. Um, but it does feel bad. It feels bad as a YouTuber to get no view, no subscribers. Uh, Patrick Kennedy, member for 19 months. The culture war is coming. Ask every fandom. Well, it is an election year, so there will be a lot of culture war stuff this week, this year. That is true. The channel will only die. Person who subscribe can't subscribe again, and they're not going to rewatch content. And here's the thing. Recommendations, impressions, right? Lowest have been in over five years. But recommendations are supposed to be determined by click-through rates. Okay, so maybe people uh, are less in. No, I think I think Shad needs to update some of his YouTuber information because it has changed. Uh, click through rate means like if if you have a, a video, you click on the video. If two people see the video, one clicks, one doesn't, then you have a click rate through rate of fifty percent. Um, but clicks do not equal more views on YouTube anymore. They used to in the past. Then there was like the epidemic of the reply girls that were just doing all the replies in the YouTube comments and like with the, the scantily clad ladies on YouTube, um, they would get a lot of clicks. People would click off in 10 seconds and then the reply girls were making bank because it was about clicks. It's now about viewer retention and average watch duration. So you can have a very high click through rate with a low amount of retention. You're not going to earn a lot of money from that. Or you can have a very low click through rate. Um, in fact, some of my some of the, the more viral a video goes typically the lower the click-through rate will become because it's being exposed to such a large audience um i have a video with three million views the click-through rate is pretty low uh let me see if i can actually show like like let me see uh do view rate hold on um let me see views views all right four million views click-through rate is where is the click actually i can't remember where i the click all right, well, that was actually very high. Okay, so that kind of goes against what I was saying. All right, well, I have a I have a video with 4 million views with a 9% click-through rate. That's actually very good. So don't, like, a good click-through rate, I think, is, like, above 8%. I have a, I have a video with 1 million views and 2% click-through rate, okay, because it's being shown to a very wide audience, okay? So you don't necessarily, they don't always necessarily correlate. Um, 
but yeah, like a click through rate of above eight percent is pretty good. So it's kind of funny that I kind of disprove myself, but also prove myself at the same time. Interested in the content, clicking less, which is supposed to be the reason you get fewer impressions. Current click through rate on the channel as far back as right, let's 2018. Have a click so we're looking at. 60. I mean, this is this is actually kind of makes me feel happy because this is kind of similar to what I get. So like it actually is like, phew, I'm actually not that. I, I, like sometimes you see your click through rate at like five percent, you're like, oh no, that's terrible. But actually, it's pretty pretty okay. This is actually kind of high. Like, like his lowest click through rate is like maybe one percent. That means someone's still watching the video, right? Like, I've got I've got some videos with low, very low click through rates. So, um, looks like his highest click through rate is about six percent. So that's like it's okay. It could be better. Um, but then again, if your click through rate's low, that maybe means that you need to change your thumbnail or change your viewer uh, description title. You know, uh, so that could be something he can improve on. That's that's good. That's actually good to know. Um, but again, having all this information. You need to know how to act on it. That's one of the challenges of being a YouTuber. And Daniel says hello. And I uh, hello to you too, Daniel. Two years are the highest that have been on the channel. And by the way, like not just at the beginning of the issue. But uh, one other thing I should mention about click-through rate is that when you have a video with very few views, it may have a very high click-through rate because it's not being shown to as many people. So a high click-through rate is not necessarily means high amount of views. You would think it would be because if people are clicking on it more, more people are seeing it. But if it's been shown to 10 people, and you have a 50% click-through rate, that's just five views. Views in January, okay. We've had highest click-through rate on the channel uh, since February last year. So about a year flat. We have been consistently getting higher click-through rate. Now, click-through rate is an awkward thing to understand, especially with yeah, large channels. Uh, because with a very large channel, on average, you expect around 10% of your subscriber rate to get views. So if you have a million view, uh, sorry, million subscribers, your average should be around 100,000 views dropping off a cliff in regards to that um that's an interesting metric i've never really heard that before um but yeah when you have a lot of subscribers you typically have a lot of dead subscribers too not that they're actually dead just they don't watch your content anymore um but yeah if you can that, again this is just why you shouldn't you shouldn't measure your channel based on your subscriber rate you should just by looking at your average view duration like honestly the subscribe number should probably be going like if youtube doesn't show your videos to your subscribers they should probably just get rid of the subscribe button entirely um, but then a lot of YouTubers base their entire marketing principle around how many subscribers they have, when realistically it should be about how many average views you get. Um, but YouTube is moving towards that. And like I said, there has been some internal talk about removing the subscribers entirely. The only thing that probably stopping YouTube from doing that at this point is that YouTubers themselves would revolt. Like if you can't get your, your gold subscribe button or your silver subscribe button, what's the point, right? ratio but it also means for large channels click-through rates on average are much lower for large channels than they are for smaller channels and so if you're looking at this and say wow your click-through rate is really low on average between three and four percent click-through rate this is actually standard for very large channels uh, and it's been standard for my channel and in, in actual fact the click-through rate has been a bit higher in the last year but that doesn't make sense click-through rate should usually inform the algorithm that people are liking and interested in it and also watch time as well watch time has always been really high likes dislikes really high interactions comments really high that, that but none of those are problems all right and those are the things that are supposed to inform the algorithm to then recommend the content again and give it more impressions but it doesn't seem like youtube is interested well, in actually. not entirely again it's about viewer satisfaction getting the most popular content to be viewed the most amount of times they're vastly more interested in getting people to watch the type of content that they deem appropriate and they want people to watch. And I mentioned they're on record about saying this. And one of the casualties in that agenda is Shadowversity. It's seriously been put on the boot and most definitely more so in the last three months. And even with a good click-through rate, recommendations are through the floor. It's a little, and you yeah, it's a bit a cope. It's a bit drop cope. in January where there was this change in the algorithm. Something happened. Uh, or Did the algorithm change in January? Did the algorithm change in January? I'm going to say no. If the algorithm changed in January, then surely everyone would have noticed it. I have, I have about, I have like three YouTube channels I'm kind of really working on. I've got more than three YouTube channels, but I, I don't work on all of them at the same time. Um, I go through like different phases of interest in different topics and things like that. Um, but I have noticed no change in the algorithm. The only thing I've noticed is the typical dip in ad revenue, which is always accompanied after December because all the Christmas advertising money gets spent up. January to February, pretty low. March starts to recover. Summer's pretty good. I have not seen a change in the algorithm. So has there been a change? That means that there's probably a change in either viewer habits, Shad's content, or a competitor is on the scene. Has 
one of those it could be there's more things too right there's just the biggest things i would think like if so shad has said that he's like he's got um chronic fatigue if he's showing up less in his videos in gen like if i go back and watch his videos from january if he stops showing up in the videos around that time that would be an explanation right um or if like there's i guess that guy who was fighting with cell sword arts if that guy's videos are exploding maybe people are going to his channel instead there could be a competitor or someone that's just or someone that's just making more anime content and the people that like swords also like anime and they would rather watch new anime products that's not i don't think there's been any evidence to suggest that the algorithm has changed and there has been no evidence to suggest so far that he's being suppressed as an individual because if that was true surely we would see the same thing on his other channel which we do not seeing or uh, someone decided to put the hammer down on Shadowversity to restrict its reach to new viewers. <laughs> I just came back from stepping away too. I think we're on the exact same slide I saw almost. Yeah, he keeps showing the same information, um, but with different reasons and things. I wish I wish there was more information because that was really interesting. And is really, really getting hammered. And by the way, there's been multiple reports of Google generally doing something like this this year. Started this year, there's been changes where a lot of independent websites have reported a drastic reduction in uh, traffic, specifically traffic from like uh, Google searches and stuff that distinctly coincides with something happening at the beginning of this year. So like, again, this would go back to the conspiracy theory that we talked about in the beginning of the video, which is one election. It's an election year. So 2024 is an election year. There will be some fuckery in algorithms across Google and YouTube, which may influence uh, the election. That is true. But we can't really apply, even if that is true, even if, like, I, I, I do believe this too. I do think that YouTube and Google um, make little changes on things on their algorithms to focus people's attention to certain topics and to create certain trends in society. But even if that is true, why would you do that on one of his channels instead of all of his channels? And why specifically on the channel that's talking about how to use swords? There's no correlation there. Like, how is an Australian swordsman going to affect the election? It doesn't. So even if he is a Christian conservative, like he said earlier in this video, I don't think that there'd be any incentive for his channel to be singled out, right? And um, while you can get singled out for your political opinions, you also gain the benefit of those extra advertising dollars that would go to conservative outlets. And only you gain that new information. So... This, I think, is actual cope at this part. Um, I mean, that's what it is what it is. One of the more prominent sword YouTube content creators reached out to me and said, things have been bad for a while, but it seems to have gotten vastly worse in January. So I'm not the only one that's noticing this. Okay, that's interesting. So I have not noticed a change over the January, but he said that sword content in particular, it may be that weapons weapons content, like I will, I will give him a bit of, I'll throw him a bit of a bone. Um, weapons content does get suppressed on YouTube, but this is typically limited to firearms. I've never seen a correlation between weapons being demonetized and swords being demonetized because of obvious American politics with weapons, right? With firearms specifically. Um, if another channel is going down, that is not proof that the entire genre is going down, though. It could be two different instances of data where they're just making correlation where there is none. Or maybe the landscape of YouTube is changing and people don't want to watch sword content anymore. That could be the answer. That could be that could actually explain it entirely, is that if all the people that make sword content, it's going down, swords are less interesting to people now, um, and they're just watching anime instead. That would explain why his Night's Watch content is doing fine because it's talking about culture war stuff, um, which is very popular. Cultural stuff is is almost like a license to print money for both views and um, and and like revenue from super chats and things like that because people like to pick a side and then they like to hear my guys versus your guys sort of thing, you know. So that's interesting to me. Um, I don't know though if that's typically true. Like I would. Again, this is just two data points. The two sword channels are saying that content is being worse. But again, he said that the content's been bad for a while, but then something changed recently. That means that Shad was doing well when the other guy was doing poorly. So is the is the the fact actually that sword content's beginning less popular for a long time and Shad's personality was keeping the sword content on his channel afloat, but as he's appearing less in his videos, maybe it's going down now. That could be the answer.
I don't think it's across the whole platform. There are certainly content creators that YouTube does seem to preference and prioritize, but the in certain other communities, it's under the boots or the thumb. So people will be noticed that something has changed and it's affecting people in a devastating way. And uh, Shadowversity, if, it keep, if things don't change, this is a uh, death sentence on the channel and the future is in jeopardy. I will always try and make content in whatever way I can. I love it, but the future is unknown as to what that will look like. Um, yeah, I, th I think like... <sighs> I think we can actually prove right now that he's not being penalized. It it's it's pretty easy to prove that he's not being penalized or picked on because when he does make like pop culture content, they do very well. Like I said, anime content, a hundred thousand. Batman, just under a hundred thousand. Um, zombie apocalypse best medieval weapons, a hundred thousand. Samurai armor, a hundred and seventy thousand. This is not the views of a suppressed channel. Like his views are going down. It just seems like he's like he Baldur's Gate, a hundred thousand. Um, the drama was Cell Sword Art, a hundred thousand. Hidden Blade from Assassin's Creed, a hundred thousand. Um, and like he said, this happened from January, like it's currently April, so this is two months ago. So if you could get two months ago, that was February, which he said he content started going down in January. When he talks about anime or pop culture, he gets over a hundred thousand. Um, except for the high ground of the Star Wars video, but that's probably because it's pretty cool content, who could say. Um, three months ago, 150,000. Star Wars, like, well, this is interesting. There's a one Star Wars video did well, and the other one didn't do it. But that's because he was talking about the spin defense. This is not the views of a suppressed channel. It's just, it looks like he's making content that people want to watch and people that content that people don't want to watch. And I think, I think he knows. Sorry, I should reword this. Okay, so I watched, like I said, I watched Shadowversity in phases. So I'll watch a video, watch maybe three, four videos, and then I won't watch it for a month. I started watching Shadowversity again after the Cell Sword Arts drama. What happened here is that Cell Sword Arts is a another sword YouTuber who called out Shadowversity, saying that like he was like. Um, he, he said a lot of things like Shadowversity's videos are unreliable; they're not historic. Like he he pandas to the anime industry, uh, things like that. Um, and again, they're like both very big channels, like a, a million views. Like this is kind of funny because Cell Sword Art gets lots of got much less views. This is actually really funny, actually. So Cell Sword Arts, a million subscribers. Um, Shadowversity, a million subscribers. Cell Sword Arts gets like. A thousand videos, fencing video, a thousand video, or like three thousand videos. Um, let's see, pain. How do pain affect how we fight? Electrocute ourselves to find out. Eight thousand views. So, cell sort arts is in a much worse situation than Shadowversity. And when I was watching, as I watched Shad's verse, Shad's video, and I watched cell sort arts video because I want to see both sides of the story because it's very interesting to me um, to see these two channels that I knew nothing about drama fighting about. You know, because everyone loves everyone loves drama. Let's be honest, everyone loves drama. People say they don't like drama, they love drama. Everyone loves drama. One of the things that Cell Sword Arts was critical of Shadowversity for is that Shadowversity does a lot of pandering videos where he talks about anime to get in views. So Shad knows, Shad knows that these videos are like the double bladed sword or the anime videos, it brings in the views. So when he makes that video, he brings in the views. But I think he doesn't like making those videos. I don't think he likes the, the Kimetsu, Kimetsu no Yaiba like uh, whip sword video. Like I think he does that because he knows it brings in views. And then he feels like his, you know, um, Claymore versus um, Katana video is like the real the real content, but people come for the anime content, right? If they if they do that, then just make more of the anime content if you want more views. Um, sometimes that's it's very frustrating as a creator because you want to talk about something that you like, but maybe the audience doesn't like it. So, I think I think we can one hundred percent say that Shad isn't being suppressed by the algorithm because he does get views when he makes what the audience wants. It's kind of funny. If the audience is happy, they watch. If they're not happy, they don't watch. How is that being suppressed? Again, I like his content. I think he does great content. But I'm just not seeing a conspiracy against him. So what's the cause of it? I uh, get the impression that it's from multiple sort of things. Something actively being changed in the algorithm to the very negative effect of uh, shorts, as well as the size of the channel. Because sometimes large channels can be the victims of their own success. That's but true. I think shorts have been devastating for Shadowversity and the whole platform, honestly. So hear me. This kind of sounds like old man yelling at the kids for the new stuff. 
like like a lot of people complain about shorts they're like how the, sh the shorts they're making people's attention span shorter they're not gonna watch my videos it's not the case like mr beast is still getting millions of views right like if we're gonna compare him as the world's great like the world's biggest youtuber and he makes a lot of shorts but his shorts gonna lead into his content hey legal vice and how's it going man he says help help i'm being suppressed come see the violence inherent to this <laughs> yes um indeed indeed yeah youtube was recommending all creators to get on board with shorts do shorts that's how you're going to get some growth that's how you that's where it's at and so we gave it an honest go and we made some really fun shorts i actually think they are quite enjoyable and watchable but you make no money off of shorts and uh, we've discovered a, a vastly greater issue with them because we got a huge amount of subscribers from shorts and we did everything we could to try and get those short subs to watch our regular content. If you watch any of the shorts on Shadowversity, you'll see a strong call to action to a larger form video. And so out of the 352,000 subscribers we gained since we begun to make shorts about a year and a half ago, which was in August. Of so like the, the shorts thing is actually kind of cope. Um, so Mr. K says they're not actually changing attention spans. They're just getting people used to shorter content. Not necessarily. Um, so shorts and YouTube has a very strange sort of relationship. YouTube wants the short form content people, but the shorts, when they were introduced, they were a really good way to grow a channel and you can transfer, transfer short users into a YouTube, uh, like long form content viewer, but YouTube was having such a problem figuring it out. Like they couldn't figure out how to do this and this. It was it was such a mess. They just split the channel entirely. So now you have the shorts tab and the video tab. And from YouTube's own mouth, they say there is no relation between a shorts content and a long form content, which means if I watch this video on the classic medieval bow, that means I will be recommended more shorts from Shed's channel, but none of his long form content. So they're completely divorced from each other. So what this means is that there's just two different audiences and there's very little crossover. So the shorts actually don't really affect channels in, if you're making shorts content, you get a lot of shorts views, you get some subscribers from that, but it's not gonna affect your videos unless your shorts are designed to lead people into other content. Um, and this idea, the idea that shorts is destroying someone's channel is, is number one, it's cope, it, it's cope. And number two, you can delete videos if shorts are just, if you think that shorts, like all these shorts are the, the cause of his channel dying, unlist them. If you unlist a video, YouTube counts it as that video never happened. So what that means is you can still gain a subscriber from it. You still gain the revenue from it, but you no longer show up in the watch history. So if, if Shad's content is all the shorts and he's about sword shorts and he starts uploading a hamburger short, then he removes all of the shorts that are about swords and he only has the hamburger short. That means that he's got none of the previous sword short content is going to be showing to this hamburger audience. Um, but if he has another sword content, everyone that's seen a previous one of his shorts can be recommended his short content from the next sword video. It just won't be recommended his long form. And there, there is actually a little bit like YouTube is actually trying to fix this so that there is some way to to have like a bit of a crossover between shorts showing up in the short shelf and also um, showing your long form videos. They are working on that. But saying that shorts is the reason is like, like I said, it's cope. And if it really is the problem, delete them. He can delete them at any time. Some channels have done this. I know channels that have deleted all their shorts because they decided that the shorts were doing bad stuff to their channel. They made the choice to delete them. Uh, but here's the problem. He has millions and millions of views on these shorts and deleting them will feel bad. If you've got a video, video with 10 million views, if you delete that, that feels really bad. And sometimes our vanity gets in the way of making good business decisions. So if he truly hates these shorts, say goodbye to the view. Because the views don't even, like 10 million views on a shorts isn't actually that much money anyway. And like if they're not getting new views, it doesn't matter. So just delete them. 2022, nearly 300,000 of those subscribers came from shorts. That is... 83%. 83% of all the new subscribers we got over a year and a half period solely from shorts. You might think that's great. Look at all those subscribers you got. Well, it seems short viewers barely watch regular content, like at all. I mean, this is why you can see um, channels that are our shorts channel that have millions of subscribers. And even though they make regular long form, regular video content, so one a week or a couple, you know, one a month, or whatever they have, they barely can crack 10,000 views. They have millions of subscribers, barely get 10,000 views because their short subscribers simply do not watch regular content. And it's, uh, is it a combination between they just don't watch the content as well as YouTube not recommending regular content? 
to people who subscribe from shorts? I can actually, it... I can actually like to say this is to prove this is more further cope. I, I watch shorts content, you know, like everyone else does when they're basically when I wake up, maybe I'll like maybe scroll through my phone, maybe I'll watch a couple of shorts sort of things. I do watch shorts from Shed occasionally when they pop up in my feed, but I was a subscriber to him. Well, I mean, I'm not sure if I was actually subscribed, but I watch his videos, but that's the important part, right? I would watch a Shed video before I saw his shorts. But then I would sometimes watch his shorts and also watch his long-form content. So I guess an ex uh, a, an example doesn't prove the rule, right? Um, as I may be an outlier, but this is in my own use case. I have both watched his shorts and watched his long-form content, and I think they're both good. So what, what he's saying here just is is not true. This is more often watching the shorts feed. So after trying everything we could to try and get our new shorts, again, this is this is, this really comes off as kind of like man is yelling at the kids because their their music is too loud, sort of thing. But this is almost like boomer boomer uh, moment right here. Subscribers and and I say that as a proud figure of boomer of in the last year and a half to watch regular content. We've barely seen any real translation and effect and growth from that at all. Now no effect. Like recently got nothing because pay attention right the subscriber death that happened at january happened i mean i would like to pay attention but because my brain is so addled by shorts i can't i can't for more than seven seconds so sorry before Just kidding, i please. stopped doing shorts now i've stopped but i continue making shorts a good month after something happened and shorts were usually uh, the way or the source that was getting heaps of subscribers no new subscribers not even from shorts and they were if i was getting any benefit from them getting slight translation didn't seem like much now i'm getting none no subscriber growth at all from shorts no, but uh, you said you no start you start you stop making them, so of course you're not going to get any more subscribers. Um, but one thing you can happen is if you can sometimes saturate an entire pool of a certain audience. Um, there may be the case that there is only a hundred thousand people that would watch shorts that are based on sword content, and if you've gained all the subscribers from that pool, then you're not going to be recommended to a different pool, and there's no new subscribers to get. I don't know how large this sword audience is on YouTube. I figure it's pretty small, honestly. Like sword is a very niche topic like i said i think most of his subscriber growth is from like anime or gaming adjacent spaces um it like it kind of like i'll be honest the first time i saw shad's channel i was like holy shit how does someone making content about swords have a million subscribers like i thought this is a very i think he's an outlier like shad is a like very successful and massively productive outlier uh, like other sword content like we looked at soul sword arts he's getting nowhere near the views shad's getting it may be that Shad has enjoyed this position of privilege for so long, he thinks it's normal. And now that he's seeing kind of more average numbers that like the regular YouTubers get, maybe he's not okay with that. Like maybe he's grown too accustomed to it. And again, like he should feel sad about this because like, you know, he's got people to support. He's got a family, apparently five kids and at least three to four employees. Yeah, it's scary to lose the amount of money you had, but it may be that it's not that you're being suppressed. It's just you're no longer receiving the privileges that you used to have. Um, I mean, from the point of view of the of Shad, it would look like being suppressed. But as most of us don't have a million subscribers, it may just be he was being treated specially and now he's being treated normally because he still can get 100,000 views plus on a video if he talks about something that people want to hear about. The whole thing is so that's when we decide to stop doing shorts because we're getting nothing out of it, no ad revenue, no subscriber growth. And it seems like that subscriber growth is uh, a deal with the devil. We're left with nearly 300,000 short subscribers that still don't watch our regular content. And that's the content that supports the channel. He's also and trying remember, to buy and build an actual castle. Like yeah, I, I, think that's, I think that's pretty based though. Like unironically, um, when I, I, I'm on the hook because when I was a kid, I promised my mom I would buy her a castle. Like I was five years old. I'm like, mom, when I'm, when I'm the king, I'm going to build you a castle because I love you, mom. 30, 30 years later, I still owe her a castle. I'm in, I'm in the hole, guys. I'm in the hole. I need to buy my mom a castle. You don't understand. You got that? I got that castle debt. Okay, she doesn't have a castle. My mom doesn't have a castle. You think she calls me up at Christmas? She's like, "How's it going?" She's like, "No, where's my fucking castle? You've been, I've been waiting for thirty years. I'm on the hook, guys. I have to succeed, otherwise my mom can't have a castle. Very, very disappointing that I don't have that debt. But I almost have one. I almost, I found a castle. I found a castle in Japan. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you. Minutes. So, uh, the average content channel is 20 to 30 minutes. And this is an audience that likes to watch one minute long things, as well as YouTube just not recommending stuff to the, that, that audience. I found, I found a cast. Like and I think it that has been a big thing that's affected it. It doesn't really uh, explain why our content isn't being recommended to new viewers and not getting any subscriber growth at all. Because even with like, like low recommendations and low cookie. Here it is. I found it. This is the castle that I can buy. Look, chat. 
chat, you can help me out. We've got what 60 people in chat. If everyone gives ten thousand dollars, <laughs> then I can buy this castle in Japan. All right, let's be honest. It's it's a love hotel. It's an ex love hotel that is shaped like a Japanese castle. But what's the difference? Okay, when I clean this up, when I clean, when I when I when I get all the cum stains out of the carpet, this is going to be just like a castle. You're not going to know the difference, okay? And and frankly, there's a lot of cum stains in regular castles anyway. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. You could buy this right now in Japan for a million bu bucks. So it's a, no, it's not a brothel. It's not a brothel. A love hotel is where you go to have sex with someone in Japan because Japanese walls are so thin and everyone lives with their parents until they get married. The only place you can go bang is at a hotel. It's like a, it's like a motel, but they're actually very clean. Like unironically, like love hotels are probably cleaner than regular hotels. And they're a lot, they're a lot of fun. Um, this is an old abandoned love hotel that looks exactly like a Japanese castle. This is the closest I've come to owning a castle guys. I've almost, I, well, I can't afford this, but if, if the chat helps me out, we can afford this together. This could be our, this could be our castle together. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. Who lives their mother uncastled? Exactly. Exactly. I'm a bad son. This is a result and everything like that. These are still good videos and really enjoyable to watch. And you think there'd be some measure of interest in them for non-subscribers. But have a look exactly. at the viewership in like the backlog content versus now. Backlog content and recent content is just not getting recommended to new viewers at all. It's, it's being crushed to a fraction of what it used to be. Far more than what you could try and explain with saying that there are, because uh, by the way, the average click rate is still higher on the channel. And so the impressions are just tanked. And even if we try to explain it through the fact that so many shorts viewers are not watching any of the content, it doesn't really explain why it's not getting recommended as much as an average video should. But I mean, but you, your videos, his videos have more views than the average video on YouTube. Uh, that's the thing. Like he's a high view channel. Yes, yeah, like, 30,000 views is a bit low for his channel, but like if you can, if you can make a talk about, if you can talk about June and get 120,000 views, most people would kill for that. Like a lot of people, like this is some good money if you monetize this correctly. Like it's kind of crazy um, when you actually see behind the veil of what, how much YouTubers get paid. A lot of YouTubers tell you they're poor because they want you to subscribe to them and pay them like get in some of their, their um, Patreons. But a lot of YouTubers with these sort of views, they're doing very well for themselves. Um, Oh, look, in, like, <laughs> they're not all cut. I'm, I'm going to be careful because I'm going to click on this castle video. It's going to trigger me again. Um, Patrick Kennedy says, for the castle fund. There you go. I'm going to like that and give it a little heart. There you go. Uh, thank you very much. We only need everyone else in chat as well. There we go. Uh, where were we? The issue is the average click-through rate on the channel is actually higher over the past two-year period. Okay? We have the same click-through rate now as we did last year, which wasn't affected by the uh, influx of short subscribers then. And views were much, much better. It's something has changed drastically in like general. Horse Clopper 9000 with five Singaporean dollars says, I dare you to play this video together with the Vouch's context video at the same time. That's not going to happen. <laughs> if, it's the, if it's the Vouch video that I think it is, it's not going to happen. Also, Kitty with a $2 for the car, not for Castle, for Josh's mum. Thanks. Okay. Oh, no, not for Castle Fund. Sorry, Josh's mum. All right. Well, that, that's a beer. I'm going to buy a beer with that. Thank you very much. That's going to buy me one more. <laughs> Um, one more yuzu shoe. Very good, actually. Very good. Very citrusy taste. Very citrusy. I got to heart both of these super chats. There we go. Let's continue. Wary, which has just killed things. What now, right? Um, unless something changes, this channel looks screwed. Chativersity looks screwed. Okay. Fan support through membership. Yeah, I mean, there, there's two. There's there's three very obvious options here. Reduce your costs. Bring in additional revenue through. Um, through uh, sponsored content, or three, increase output on your Patreon and start plugging the Patreon. That that's the old, that's what you have the option here. Or make more interesting content as well. That's always an option too. Is just make better videos. And when I say like, it sounds funny to say make better videos because this content is much better than the videos that I make. But you know, just make more videos. Like someone in chat literally said earlier, make the Shogun content. Shogun's in the public zeitgeist at the moment. Um, make more pop culture content. Like it's actually kind of surprising he doesn't have Shogun content already. Maybe he does. That seems like a real. That seems like a no-brainer, right? Because he literally has katanas versus knights, katanas versus other like like armor, western swords, Japanese armor. How effective is it? This is literally the channel to talk about Shogun. <laughs> where is the Where is the Shogun focused video? He's got the June focused video. The problem with weapon combat in June. That sounds like a really good video because June's weapon combat is really interesting because they have shields that you have to use slow combat, slow moving blades to get through. 
Um, if you're a June fan, you'd know that, of course. But where where is the Shogun content? This is a, that's a really good like. This is actually like almost suspiciously absent. Is why is Shadowversity boycotting, shadow banning the Shogun content? Where is the love for the Shogun? And my monkey man, that that Anjin son is he's he's got that monkey aesthetic. Patreon player and subscribe star being the best option might be what saves the channel. But we have yeah. got a long way to go before sustainability, like literally three times um, as many as we have now. And I understand if people are in a position to, to help out in that regard. Now, it's not a donation or a charity. We do give content back to people who support and it's fun additional content, right? And again, thank you so much to everyone who is supporting. Like if it wasn't for you, uh, we would already be done. Okay. So the other option with i don't know what's happened to you to shadowversity and it doesn't look like things are going to change might be to start over i'll try and keep things going for as long as i can here of course there might be no way to like he does have a very good backlog of content like he has 800 videos which is insane to me it sounds insane especially of these quality and most of his videos are timeless like there's no time component unless you, like when i say timeless it means like like, obviously, his second most viewed video is not timeless. Like, this is time content. This is only going to be popular when Avengers is popular. Um, but, like, double-bladed swords, that's timeless content. Why do medieval buildings overhang their lower floors? That's timeless content. Uh, Goblin Slayer, that was obviously more popular during Goblin Slayer. This is timed content. Um, there is, a, in theory, there's a lot of views here. Like, that could just be making, generating views, like, forever this is called evergreen content on youtube if you get if you're like a small youtuber and you get two or three videos that are evergreen so they bring in a certain amount of views every day i am fortunate enough to put myself into this category i have a i get about passive 300 views per hour on my other channel which is very good uh, for a small channel especially it's not it's not the best but like if 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 i do nothing for a month and i still get 300 views every hour for an entire month that's really good that's really good if you have that sort of content, then you can make it as a YouTuber. That's what you need. You need these sort of videos that bring in views, even when you're not producing actively producing content. Because obviously, there's going to be time when you're busy, time when you're traveling, uh, maybe you get sick or something. You need these sort of evergreen things to bring in content. It kind of surprises me that more of Shad's content isn't evergreen, actually. And I think that happens because maybe it's because he's a personality. Maybe he's more personality focused than content focused so this is because like i don't li really like appearing in my videos so i do voiceovers mostly but because of that it makes it that one the content isn't based on my personality it's more based on the content that i'm sharing and if that sh content is still interested like the content in chad's case is swords um then people are going to keep searching for it if it's something they're always going to be interested in but i wonder if this is a problem that that specifically content uh sorry uh character focused youtube channels go through um i don't see this in my channel so maybe i've just chosen correctly like by by sheer accident who can say it's it's one of those weird things but when i do go to his trending video page it kind of surprises me that he doesn't have more like evergreen content here so like all of his all of his content that is getting views like these are his top six videos in views per hour so his lowest one is 77 views per hour that was five days ago. So when you have a content that's like one week old or two weeks old, it's going to get a lot of views initially, then it kind of tapers off. Uh, when I look at my channel, all of my evergreen content is like a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. I make these videos, like the videos that I make, they get a lot of views for over a long duration of time, which is very beneficial to me. Um, so maybe he should focus on that. Like some, and, and an example of what that might be is how to learn to fight with swords. Like every person that's a beginner with swords will be searching for that content. I wonder if we go to sell sword arts. So that's the guy that he was beefing with, but also gets less views than him, but also has a comparative uh, view number. If we go to trending videos for sell sword arts, look at this. His number one trending content is two years ago. Then he's got two years ago, eight days, four days, six days, 15 days, three months. Okay. So he only has one example out of six. But there you go. That, that's an example of evergreen content. This one video is generating 80 views per hour. So if you have four of these videos that are generating 80 views per hour, then if your next few videos are stinkers, it doesn't matter because you have this passive reoccurring stream of, um, of views and in theory revenue. I just noticed that Cell Sword Arts one is actually a short. So if I click on this one, if it's actually a short, yeah, that's unfortunate. Although, no, it shows up in the YouTube watch instead of the short one. So 
Maybe it's just a vertical video. Let me see. Hold on a second. Yeah, he must have incorrectly uploaded this. Okay. Yeah, that's that's weird. It's like I think he accidentally uploaded this as a short, but it went to the video player instead. Who can say? Who can say? This probably isn't generating very much revenue. Uh, but there you go. That's what you kind of need is these sort of like evergreen things. Again, for shads, this could be how to use swords, um, how to how to buy, you know, how to buy your first sword, what to look for when reviewing a katana sort of thing, how to tell a fake katana from a real katana, those sort of videos that like maybe are less the things you want to do, but more what the audience is always going to be looking for throughout the years. It's like the how to fix a toilet video. You don't get a lot of subscribers from the how to fix a toilet video, but on your plumbing channel, people are always going to be searching for how to fix a toilet because they can't help but go to Taco Bell. Save it, okay? And to that end, I uh, love making this content, always will. And like I said, I'll try and stay here as long as I can, but there might literally come a point where it becomes pointless that, that, that it's not getting the revenue it needs to sustain itself and uh, it's not working out, right? And so to that end... That's never pointless. I mean, maybe the real views were the friends that we made along the way. Okay. I am trying something. Uh, I don't know if it'll work or not, but I repurposed my Shadlands channel. So I started the Shadlands to make new content around the development of my property, building the Shadlands, the dream of building castles, when things are looking good. <laughs> For, like, again, we, we noticed... I, I think the Shadlands, the idea is very based. I think that building castles in your property is very based. But, it, oh, it looks like he deleted... Okay, so he deleted... I think every video on the Shedlands, and now he's only uploading shorter videos of his original videos that did very well. That's unfortunate. I wanted to see, I guess he's on, oh no, I can't see them anymore. Like that's unfortunate. I wanted to see him building a castle. Isn't it like, again, I do, I do empathize with, with Shad, but it, there's something very funny about a, di a guy complaining about having not enough money, but then also having his build castle on my own property development fund sort of thing. You know, do, do, is, does anyone see the humor in that? Like, oh guys, I'm going to run out of money. My castle development has, has been put on hold. <laughs> Again, building castles very based, but this is just, it's just, it's just so, com it's just such a comical situation. It's such a comical situation, but it looks like he's deleted all the content on that channel, uh, which is sad, I think, uh, and he's repurposed it. And uh, these are unironically getting a lot of views for a new channel, like 41,000 uh, subscribers, 100, 100 views an hour. 19 views an hour, 30 views an hour, 30 views an hour, 40 videos a, views an hour, 500 views an hour. Um, he's doing great. Like this, this new channel is doing well. So again, this kind of goes to show that he's not being suppressed, that maybe he needs to change his style. He needs to evolve his content you know, on his main channel. Much, much better. But I've had to put it on indefinite hold uh, for over a year because uh, I haven't had the money to continue development there. But not only that, I haven't even had the resources to film additional content separate to developing a property because we were just making content, uh, which was based around all fun stuff. And so it's sad to see that I can't do it because we didn't have the time or resources to, do, to make any content there. And that's just the filming, let alone editing. And, you know, I would have needed to hire a new editor to try and have content for the channel. It's kind of just, and, like, it's just another thought is that a lot of, a lot of ancient kings did get bankrupt by building their castles, like like little warlords and daimyos and and things, like building a castle or building a tomb, like a pyramid or something, can actually bankrupt your entire empire. So it, it's kind of funny. It's like it's almost it's almost like poetic, in the way that it, it the way that it uh, is turning out. Again, I I want Shad to do well though. Like hopefully he comes out of this situation. But um, there's just some divine irony in this sort of situation. There was no content on it for a flat year it was dead in the water and things don't look like they're getting better it looks like they're getting worse and so the channel was it was doing nothing and so i can use it for a very important purpose and so shadowversity videos appear to be dying partly because of how poorly they are doing with you know so many short subscribers inactive subscribers the suppression of the reach and and everything i don't i, I haven't seen evidence of suppression i'm afraid um it seems like a change in audience habits if anything but perhaps it is a and again. I would have to review all of his content, but I think it's a change in either viewing habits or himself showing up less in the content more. And if people are attached to Shed as a personality, if he doesn't show up in the video, it's going to have less reach because it's going to get less um, average watch duration. And if Shadowversity is now getting seriously shadow banned, right? Yet the content is still good. 
starting over on a new channel, but not necessarily just like the content is good thing is like a very subjective argument to make. Like it's it's the age old argument of who's better, like the Beatles or Justin Bieber. It's like, you know, it sounds like such a stupid thing to say, but like Justin Bieber sells a lot of albums. Is he good? Well, he's very popular. He makes a lot of money. Is he good though? I mean, how do you define success? Like if the content is good, but it's not like uh, if it's not um, monetarily viable, maybe it's not good. You just really like it. And I like it. But if the audience at large doesn't like it, that kind of determines what is good. The good is determined by the audience. And it's it's a pure um, numbers game. Just mirroring content. Uh, I can actually do some interesting things. But I mean, he, his content is doing well. Like, again, like I got I to gotta stop myself because his content is doing well. It's just he's spending too much. Like again, that's another problem is he's spending too much on having three employees at minimum. Like you've got to downsize maybe it or like maybe maybe have the two the two cell sword guys or maybe have the two sword boys like fight each other and the winner gets to stay on the channel. Like like have a battle royale that'll be a viral video and the, then you cut your costs in half at the same time. Little little sword humor for you. Chadlands because there is a whole wealth of uh, videos a backlog that. The new generation coming to YouTube have never seen, and they're not going to get recommended it. Those videos are effectively dead now, but they are phenomenal videos. And so I can try and use the channel, the Shadlands, to bring that content to a new generation, but also try and make it easier to watch. If anything that we can learn from shorts at the moment, it seems like there is an audience for shorter, easier to consume content. There is. There is an audience for shorter, easier to consume content. There's also an audience for longer content. Um... And it's just like a really good example of this is literally how I learned about Shed in the first place, EFAP. Um, let's go over to the Mueller channel. Uh, here we go. So like if you've never seen EFAP, every frame of pause, they, they do a live stream first, then they unlist the live stream and they, they upload it to their, their backup channel. This is a six hour video with 130,000 views. Uh, like, and this isn't even the longest con like, like this mall is called like the long man um 1.2 million views 12 hour video breakdown of star wars nine hour video seven hundred thousand views um is lord of the rings trilogy bad and it's just like guys talking that's why it's so fun to watch because it's just like it's literally like having a conversation with your mates about why aragorn is better than like boromir or something like that like uh responding to nicholson's well i didn't like it the joker 11 hours six hundred thousand views there is an argue, there is a there is a audience for short content, but there's also an audience for long content, and there's a short there's a audience for medium content. There's all these audiences, but are you resonating with the audience? You don't have enough time in a minute to even cover a topic well, but I can see that there could be an appeal with shorter content, and so I can take the old content, really popular. Uh, Eleven content. hours on regular though, an average EFAP is like. Five hours minimum. Like if it's like three hours, it's a short episode. They almost always go for six hours at least. And like I expect an EFAP to be eight hours. Like unironically. <laughs> and I love I love EFAP. Um, it's like sometimes I'll put it on like a Saturday while I'm like maybe playing some games or something. I'll you know do a couple of hours of gaming and listen to an EFAP and I only get like a quarter of the way through or something. And then I'm like, I'll watch the rest later and I never do. But um, those videos have some absolutely insane watch times because people stay all the way to the end. Um, so he like Shad knows there is an audience for long content, and that's not like that's like the like EFAP is like low production quality. Not, not I don't want to say low production quality because it's not. It's hold on, where, where, did, where did my tab for EFAP go? Uh, do I still have it? I'll just go. I'll just type it in again. EFAP. Um, but like like I'll like I'll show you what I mean. Like they they show clips. They they do a lot of work. Don't get me wrong, but like it's mostly like guys in Discord. Just guys in Discord talking while they're watching a video. That's very low production quality in comparison to, say, getting five, gu uh, three guys to shoot, uh, to to slice swords around, right? And and like, there is some very high effort editing that I see on the main channel for like Mola and um, Rags and Fringy and everything. They do a lot of high effort content as well. But like this sort of content where you're just like sitting in Discord talking doesn't have a lot of production value, uh, production cost, I should say, not value, cost. Um, so you can make anything work on YouTube if you have something that resonates with an audience, is what I'm trying to say. Content 
and re-edit it in a shorter, snappier, more consumable format with the hopes of uh, putting it on a new channel to potentially reach a new audience that haven't seen Shadowversity content before or know the awesome fun stuff about swords and everything. And so I can do that with my most popular videos and then my really long videos that cover multiple subjects, right? I can clip out the uh, individual subjects that I cover within those videos and package it as a complete singular video that covers that singular topic, again, to make it more accessible and people can find those me talking about those topics without having to dig through an hour long video. Again, making it more consumable and accessible. There are millions of new users on the platform that are not getting shown this content. And this might be a way to reach them. And it's also like an opportunity for me to revisit the OG content, some of the very first videos I ever made, right? Remake them with much higher production value, with much better equipment and so I'll put a pin here. Um, remaking your old content on YouTube is actually a very good move. Um, if you have a content that does well, like if you do your top 10 anime betrayals list, um, you and it does like a million views, you should absolutely make four more versions of that. Top 10 anime betrayals that, that got revenge on the last ones or like top 10 hero redemptions. Like making, like repeating the same content, doubling down on what works is absolutely a fantastic idea on YouTube. So that means, but for Shad, oh, I found the I found the EFAP on there, I was right there. Um, so for Shad, that means doubling down on the um, why Veritism was wrong, doubling down on problems in June, doubling down on the Kimetsu no Yaiba, Demon Slayer, doubling down on the Batman content, doubling down on the spinning is a good trick from Star Wars content. But what I think Shad's mistake is, is he's confusing the videos he thinks are good with the ones that the audience think are good. And he also thinks that if you make the same video, but have it higher production cost, higher production value, it'll do better in the algorithm. And that's just not true. Um, and look at She-Hulk, for example. They spent a lot of money on production. It was shite. It was, what, a um, 120... No, I think She-Hulk was like 25 million uh, an episode. And it was absolute dog shite. Where if you look at something like Godzilla uh, minus one, it was like the same price as one episode of She-Hulk. And it fantastic success. Putting more money into something doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do better. It could. Absolutely it could. Avatar did very well and it was very expensive. Um, but there's one thing that I've always sort of really thought about. Um, and there's a saying that goes, to make something truly great, all you need is not enough time and not enough money. And that is very true in the gaming space. And I think also in the content creation space, when you're kind of struggling and just getting by and everything's just done on time and you're, you're having to like make creative shortcuts and use innovation because you don't have that money, it makes a better product because you put more effort into it. When you have more money, you feel like putting money into something is putting more effort in, but it's not. It's just spending more money. So making the old videos again could be like, we'll go to his oldest videos. His oldest video is why swords are awesome. Yeah, I'd remake this video in like in like 2024. That's a good video. You can go off and you can actually show all your swords. Like that's a that's a good candidate for remaking it. But don't just spend a lot of money to make it look fancy. Just remake it maybe for the new audience, right? Like it doesn't have to be expensive. You, It's not what you earn. It's what you save. That's like one of the key pieces of advice for life. And he's making money on his YouTube channel but he's spending more than he's making. And that's an issue. Like I said, like we're looking at about, I think we said, um, what, seven, uh, 14,000 a month, 14,000 a month across his, um, our estimate of his channel plus Patreon and subscribe star. That's a lot of money. But if you're paying four people, it's not going to go as far. Maybe, maybe it's time to cut off the editor and do the editing yourself. Maybe it's time to, you know, tell the guys like, hey, I can't pay you what I used to pay you. Would you take a percentage rather than the salary? Or, or would you um, perhaps make your own channel and we could do collaborations between them? And then you can, I don't need to pay you because you're getting paid in exposure. But hold on here. You can be paid in exposure. Being paid in exposure is a meme, but it's also true. Like if, if someone wants to hire me to edit their video and they're like, I'm going to pay you in exposure, I'm going to tell them to get fucked. But if Mr. Beast is like, hey, do you want to come on my channel and be a character on my channel and I'll pay you an exposure? I'll say absolutely yes, because the exposure I'm going to get from Mr. Beast is absolutely worth it. There are kind, there are ways to make exposure work. Um, but typically being paid an exposure is a meme because people don't actually give you any exposure. But anything, time, audiences, um, production value, all these 
these concepts can be very, very valuable and a form of payment. References and resources. To well, maybe like, you know, he's like, hey, guys, you can live in the castle. You can stay in my castle, but you get half the salary. Take it or leave it. I mean, again, these are just silly ideas. And the stream's almost over, guys. And uh, package it Oof, in a way that a uh, hopefully will be uh, more accessible to reach this new generation. So I will be making dedicated videos for the YouTube channel, The Shadlands, as well as idea. repackaging great content that is not getting viewed on Shadowversity. I, I do think it was a mistake, though, to maybe repurpose this channel. Um, the shortcut to repurposing The Shadlands is like, well, you've got an already monetized uh, channel. But I think the deleting of it, like, I actually was really curious to see, like, the Shadlands content, I had never heard of it before. But it sounded really interesting, like building a castle on your property. That sounds fantastic. But now that content's gone. Um, I would have created a new channel instead. Like if you're going to repurpose it, just remake a new channel. Like let's face it, with as many subscribers as he has, he can get a channel monetized with one video just by leveraging his existing audience. So I feel like this was a bit of a shortcut he didn't need to take. And maybe it was a mistake. And this does not mean I'm going to stop making videos on Shadowverse in the meantime. I will. But this is also building up a backup if shadow versus legitimately does die right it's good to have a backup uh, though shadowlands might very well be the way to go to that in on a channel that isn't getting kicked under the boot that has been uh, devastatingly damaged by shorts content uh, uh, I, the, the short thing is a bit of a cope I'm, I'm afraid i don't think that's the reason his channel's going the way it is and might give second life and a second chance so uh, the Shadlands is already being rebranded. The channel is already up and it's monetized, which is useful for that as well. And See, this is clever, like cutting to the chase and straight to the point. That's a, that's a good sword pun. I appreciate that. And I would only encourage people to subscribe if they're interested in watching the content there. Please do not subscribe if you're not going to watch the content. But if you like the shorter, easy to consume content to revisit old classics of Shadowversity, please do subscribe. Check out the content. And uh, that might be one of the... Um, uh, ways to try and survive this. And look, it might not work out because one of the issues that could be facing Shadowversity is not something that's targeted to the channel. It could be targeting to sword-based content or this type of content specifically. And that would mean that the um, Shadlands... I think I, I think what I'm taking away from this is that Shad doesn't actually know what his actual channel is. Because I'm not going to say his channel is a sword-based content. I don't think it is at all. I think it's like weapons in media focused content so he's essentially a media channel like a like a pop culture channel um he may have been like it may be like a slow transition from the sword content into talking about pop culture and it, it's kind of like a bit of a little trap right like you get a little you do one anime video and you get a bunch of views and you're like oh mate, make another one mate. then your entire audience is replaced by the anime peoples and it's like well i'm a sword channel no you're an anime channel now um maybe he hasn't realized that yet but I, I definitely think that I would consider him a, a pop culture channel. Content is going to get suppressed and see no real reach to new audiences either, which means this type of content that specifically I'm making, at least, is pretty much... The weave, the weave for power is very strong, I have to admit. Like at all. I have to admit but as we do, Night's Watch is growing and I'm having a lot of fun, and uh, that also might be able to grow to be sustainable in and of itself because uh, it's not facing issues. Well, it started to face issues, but then it's been given second life with... Uh, Certain things that are happening in the uh, gaming sphere, let's call it. And this is the state of YouTube for me uh, and the Shadowversity uh, channel as is. It's not a very positive one. There are things that I like. I, I still try and hope. I'm, I'm not giving up. I'll be making content. But so there's like a minute of this left. I'm going to let play it play it out to see if there's any nuggets of wisdom at the end. It feels like uh, you know the uh, mark of death has been placed on it. And uh, when things like drop and get really worse for certain um, types of content, because stuff like this has happened to other content spheres in the past. Uh, it was animation content that was doing really well. And then YouTube prioritized longer content and they just basically killed off an entire genre of content. And that very- I mean, we talked about the animation earlier. It's not the case. Yes, animation was killed through a pure advertise, uh, through ad revenue, but the animators that survived, they adapted. Like Flash Gets, we talked about earlier, really good model they've got right now. They're making over 100000 a month from their Patreon um, because they have made their original cartoon and they have been, you know, promoting their Patreon. Um, so sometimes certain content gets out of the YouTube ad revenue vogue, but you can't rely on the ad. Like this is the best takeaway for any YouTuber watching this is you can't make your entire revenue or the majority of your revenue ad focused. It has to be through selling a product or bringing people into these Patreons or subscribe stars or whatever. Um, if you make your entire business model based off the ad revenue, then that means every time there's even a slight change in YouTube's policies, like let's say 
Shad gets his channel back on. Like he these even if his other channels he's making now succeed, he's still beholden to the ad revenue policy. If there's another change, it's the same problem again. So you want to not make new content to get away from this problem. You want to make the problem not a problem by changing the majority of your income from the ad revenue. That's um, that's the big takeaway from this well, entire thing. What's happening to content, sort of related content on YouTube, or just or just chat versus, but it's happened before where people have just been killed off. Channels have been killed off. I mean, not people, but uh, the content creators and their ability to make content has been killed off and their channels die. And uh, it happens. Okay. I've been very, very lucky uh, with what I've been able to do on Shadowversity. Not everyone has that opportunity. So even if it does die and I have to pivot and change and you know adapt, right? Very grateful for everyone who has watched me along the way. Like, like I really am thankful to everyone. It has been a blast. Like I, I am tremendously lucky. I'm still going to be around. I always be making content, but things might have to change. And then I just have to see you what will happen exactly go for the root cause not the symptoms very true thank you for the support especially the supporters donating money i'd already be dead if it wasn't for you the channel would be dead if it wasn't for you all right that is the end of the video my advice like uh, shed's never gonna watch this let's be honest my advice to shed adversity is that he's put himself in a situation where his most marketable and most profitable revenue stream from ad revenue in particular is going to be from pop culture related things. So he has to make more pop culture videos and less straight sword content. He might not want to do that, but if you've got to put food on the table, then sometimes we have to sacrifice the things that we'd rather be doing for what we need to be doing. Second of all, um, he needs to move away from the ad revenue model as we just spoke of. That means providing extra content on his Patreon and then telling his audience what the benefits they will receive of subscribing to him on Patreon in every video. It's a small thing to do. Also, get those sponsorships in. Yes, it does detract from the content. But again, if you've got five mouths to feed, maybe that 10-second ad read doesn't sound so bad. I have seen no evidence that Shad's being shadow banned based on the... Uh, based on... His other channel is doing well. So the title YouTube is killing this channel, I think is not accurate. I think this is a mistake and he's kind of, maybe there's a bit of, there's a, let's be honest, there's a lot of cope in this video. There's a lot of cope in this video. YouTube is not doing anything that I can see to his channel. Um, it's either a changing audience or a change in the content himself. And he's maybe not realized yet that he's put himself in this situation. But the good news is, that he can get out of this ditch if he just makes a few simple changes. And uh, hopefully, he'll do better. Um, good job, team. Detective Copium on the chase. We present our findings. And yes, we have found it. Uh, so it's not over for Shed. I like his content. I hope he keeps making it. I hope he can get back on track on that castle. But I do not think he's being shadow banned. There is no nefarious thing at play here. It's just sometimes you need to roll the punches. It's the way it is. Whew. I was going to do stuff today, but it's like 8 o'clock. This stream went for three hours. What the fuck? Three hours stream talking about a 40-minute video. Not quite long, man. Tia, but it's getting there. I'm like medium man, I guess. Um, I'm talking about a, if talking about dead channels, it really does make me a medium. Think about that. Hey, hey, hey. Um, very, very, very... I am like disjointed now i cannot think straight um mid man there you go mid man mid mid man thank you very much for the support the likes and especially those super chats they go a long way to building that castle for my mum. um she's gonna love it when i eventually get it done um i'm gonna throw in I'm, i haven't been streaming very much because i've been very busy but i'm gonna try and throw in more random hours streams at different time zones as well because again like i said you have to evolve and you have to change the way you do content from time to time so you can expect more unscheduled streams but what i talk about is going to be very varied um the things that interest me change as everything does and i saw this video and i was i was very passionate about this topic and i thought i had a good thing to say if you see a video like this you can always suggest them to me on either discord or on twitter um, of course if you join as a channel member you will get access to the discord where we have a bit of memes and we post some pictures and you can see my cat pictures and things like that um, there's the exclusive cat content over there. And there will be a cat video coming. It was going to be today, but I guess it's tomorrow now. Um, the cat train cafe I went to yesterday, that will be up most likely tomorrow. I'll post that on Twitter and Discord so you can see the cute trains and things. 
With that said, I am going to enjoy the rest of my Saturday evening. I might play some StarCraft or something. But I hope you have a great day, morning, or evening, wherever it is. I think give cats... All right, we'll give you a cat picture right now. I'll give you a cat picture before we go. This will be the last thing I share. Hold on. Hold on. Here you go. Here you go. Here's the, here's the cat picture. Here's the cat picture. There's the cat picture. There you go. So if you weren't... Obviously, not everyone in this stream watches my Friday stream, but I was talking yesterday. I went... Well, it was actually two days ago now. So I went to a train, model train slash cat cafe in Japan. And what they have is they have these normal sized cats on this tiny train thing. So the trains come past and the cats attack them. It's fantastic. It's actually fantastic. Like it's so adorable to see their cats like just attack the trains. So I'll make a video about that. Um, and you know, it's actually for a good cause too, because all the cats are rescues. Every single cat in this cat cafe has been rescued from death's door. Um, they're all strays, um, abandoned. Um, they've got a cat hospital. They're trying to get people to adopt these cats. That's the best thing. Like it, like I've been to some cat cafes that aren't great. This one, first you have a great time because the cats chasing the trains is just hilarious. Second of all, they show you all the work they're doing saving these feral cats from death. And then thirdly, they're telling you to adopt these cats. Like there's a big, big group of cats you can adopt. It's great. It's fantastic. That said, peace, stay safe, and I am out of here. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.